The Lord I Kim, Mr. Stay Woke, shout out to all the people out here, um, the month of Ramadan is over, these gloves is getting ready to come off, playtime is over. You ever got a black ass whooping? Huh? You ever got a black ass whooping? You know when your mother told you that stupid shit? 
when it's when she told you right before you got your ass whooped that this is gonna hurt you or hurt me more than it's gonna hurt you you ever had your mother tell you that hit that like button yes Tori and Howard you ever had your mother tell you that this gonna hurt me more than it's gonna hurt you like what take the what and leave the what take the what so you telling me you got that extension cord in your hand a stick you ever got beat with an extension cord you know what it feels like to get your ass whooped and then your mom's be slick tell you get in the tub go take a bath so she can get the clothes off she wants your clothes off and wants you wet so she can beat that ass to, sh to show you. You know you done fucked up, right? You know you know you done, you know you done fucked up, right? You know that scene from Minister Society? You know you done fucked up, right? And she whoop yo ass. Well, this is the season of ass whoopings. And see, us in the urban community, we need our asses rolly whipped. We need our asses rolly whipped. Because we us, 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 children of the plantation, we don't even realize that as soon as the round table, the elite, finish their little quarrels over there in the Middle East, and they finish setting up the chess table. All their attention is going to be focused back on back on us. Are y'all listening to me? Are you watching or are you listening? You got two ears, you got one mouth. Do you understand? If America, if the American, the Native Americans, which is you, if you would if you are God's chosen people. Your identity has been stolen. You know, like when somebody goes to the store and they steal your credit card and your information and they run your credit up, your whole identity on this earth, who you are as a people has been stolen. And somebody else that's in power, that's controlling every day, they're running around with your identity and evil is the way. So when, while we are living in the signs of the time, and evil was waiting to show itself, we can't find God nowhere because us righteous men that left a righteous state, a righteous state to live illegal, to live backwards, to go against the laws of nature, to go against the laws of God. We abandoned everything that we are supposed to be doing as a people. And we living like savages. And because of that, the shield, the arm of God, the protection of God has been lifted off of us as a people. Are you not entertained? You can see a person lie dead directly to your face. I mean, they smile in your face all the while. They want to take your place, them back. People will sit there and lie that directly to your face. And then you'll sit up there and cover for them and say it's entertainment. Shall we begin? Y'all hit the like button as y'all come in this house. I hope the speaker don't go off. I got to buy a new one. My speaker not charging up, but I need y'all to actually listen. To actually listen so I can break this shit down to you, right? Let me start this live off with, 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 your, with my boy. He used to be my boy, Charleston White. I'm going to address him tonight real quick. Top audio detailing. Those you are not allowed to question are real enemies. Your real enemies are always use the victim card. They gained your sympathy. 
Then they come in for the kill. They run Hollywood. They run the music industry and media. Hello? I'm actually feeling myself looking at myself on camera like, oh, shit. <laughs> All in. Real talk, family. Thank you for sponsoring this war. Y'all ready? So now. Just to start off, this is just a warm up. You know, because in order for me to get my message out, y'all know I can't really, really, really be who I want to be. So I got to water my shit down with celebrity gossip. So let's do what they want. Charleston White got on the internet and super violated Gilly's son, right? And before I start this, I want y'all to understand something. Stay, stay relentless. The people still need your voice. We don't bend and we don't break. I want y'all to understand something, right? I really believe in blood sacrifices. So when I said little cheese was blood sacrificed, that's what I believe in. Not only do I believe in that, I see Math Hoffa. He did a little segment that he put up talking about how people be saying niggas blood sacrificed their mother. Kanye West admitted to us that his mother was a blood sacrifice. But he didn't say he blood sacrificed her. He said that they, they killed her. Who's the they? Your mother went to go get a surgery done. Who is the they? Appreciate what you're doing for the culture. Thank you, family. Appreciate you. Thank you for sponsoring this war. Mm -hmm. Who's the they that Kanye was talking about that killed his mother? We already know what the they was. We already know what the sacrifice was. Let's stop playing games, my nigga. I don't have to keep playing these audios back and forth during my lives. So now, with that being said, Charleston White came to us as the savior of our children. But you getting on the internet and you trying to destroy our children? Oh man, here we go, man. I had to bring him back. He's the talk of social media as usual. He, he's the algorithm king, the YouTube guy, social media guy. He didn't crack the Da Vinci Code, Charleston White, man. He's back. What's up, man? Yeah, yeah, the, 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 the new nigga kid on the comedy block. Yeah, yeah, I'm, a, yeah, I'm officially, uh, yeah, my career as a stand-up comedian now. After all these years of working together, I've never seen so many people mad at you as they are right now. Oh, they here right now? Every interview I've done, your name comes up. Every every. Let's see if we can do this without that speaker that just died. Easter just passed. Your name was all the old heads that their Easter uh, was bringing you up. Your name's everywhere right now. Oh, they, oh, they, oh, for what? What I done done this time? Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I done done so much. I mean, of course, the the Gilly situation, man. A lot of people, you know, a lot of people love you, but it was just it was. This is that one thing where people just don't agree with you. Uh, well, uh, they they agree with King Von. Can y'all hear that? How was the sound? Sound better without the speaker?
Can y'all hear that? What, what the, how does it sound? Does it sound good? All right, now. I want y'all to notice. This is the beginning of the interview, right? Why? They say cheese. Bitch ass. Because that was a bitch ass move you did say cheese. Why did say cheese? Decide to ask Charleston White about cheese. Why did you decide to ask that man about cheese? And respark a situation that passed already. I'm going to tell you why. You want to know why? Because when Charleston White started disrespecting cheese, following in my footsteps, even though I never disrespected cheese, I went at Gilly. So he followed the same blueprint, but it didn't go nowhere. His disrespect was overshadowed by Diddy. So he didn't go rival the way that he wanted to go viral, disrespecting Little Cheese, because the Diddy situation just shut that shit all the way down. So what Charleston White and Cheese did, he brought Charleston White back on his platform to rekindle the shit because it didn't go nowhere. And I'm not going to let the nigga get away with that. That shit is whack. But listen for yourself. They agree with Dirk. Uh, they agree with Julio Fulio. Uh, I remember I, I talked to uh, Diddy's dad. Uh, I've talked to Tuka's mom. Uh, I, man, they, where they done FBG Ducks, mama, mama duck. So why is it that they so mad about Gilly's son. And he was a grown kid, talking gangster and playing gangster. So, it's people are mad at you, Charleston White, about Gilly's son, because you came to us as somebody that was trying to save our children. But every time we look at you, you trying to destroy somebody's children, you trying to destroy other black people. And then you using... The shit that the children are doing to each other as an excuse for you as a grown ass man to do it. That's why. Only two outcomes of this life, right? So why they so mad now? When it, we watch drill music evolve and erupt. And, and if I'm not mistaken, uh, Chief Keith's new song is, is dissing Tuka. Oh, one of Chief Keith's new song is dissing Tuka. Yep. So, yep. so here we go again. I'm making everybody look like a hypocrite, but because Gilly is one of their favorite celebrities, it's easy to feel sorry for him and be mad at me. And I'm telling everybody who's mad at me, suck my that nigga song. You don't fuck about that nigga song. That nigga song was playing gangster. And gangsters get go to jail. And when gangsters go to jail, I don't cry. And I don't have no respect for the dead, homie. Huh? I don't have no respect for the dead. I have respect for my neighbor. I, I, um... He doesn't even sound right. And I don't even understand how we let him get this far with this bullshit. Because my whole thing is, if he wanted to be an ignorant nigga from the jump, then cool, be an ignorant nigga. But the nigga sold us. On him loving out us as a people, as him being in courts trying to fr free our children, free the youth, free our people from the from the court system. Everything that this nigga told us he was as a man is a is a lie. Everything that the nigga told us he was is a lie. But pay attention, listen to people. If you watch and you pay attention to people long enough, you'll see them for what they are and not what they appear to be. my mother and my father I love my brother I pray for my enemies that I yeah nah nigga but I don't give a damn about the dead when I go to the graveyard I walk on top of the tombstone yeah I spit on the grave yeah nigga I don't give a damn about the dead he don't give a damn about the dead but I do he don't give a damn about the dead but y'all do Everybody, 
every last one of us got somebody that we love in the grave. But this nigga think this shit is funny? Yeah, nigga, I don't give a fuck about the grave. What is he talking about? Are we going to let him get away with that as a people? Or is this just entertainment? All entertainment ain't good entertainment. The same shit will make you laugh and make you cry. As y'all do, I respect the living. So I'm saying to all y'all people, how can y'all have so much respect and honor for the dead, but not honor your mother and your father? So nigga, I don't give a damn who mad. I done said worse before. And I'm going to say worse again. Did this Gilly, Charleston White back and forth, did it start with the Pop Hunter situation? Yep. That's right. So you notice how Say Cheese is coercing him on where to go? Did this Gilly and um, Charleston White situation start with the Pop Hunter? So now he's using, or rather what he's doing is, he's trying to stop spamming. He's trying to basically... Without mentioning me, tell y'all that he didn't follow my blueprint and he's not following my blueprint because people are starting to tell him, you're trying too much to be like Hassan Campbell and it's really, really showing. The shit is getting ridiculous. If you're really doing comedy and you're doing stand-up comedy, why are you still doing this whack shit on YouTube? If you're really doing stand-up comedy, Charleston White, why you keep degrading yourself? Because he think we stupid as a people. Where it started from? Because I didn't know who Giddy the King was. I just saw the Pop Hunter situation. We've done that interview, right? And that's when yeah. Philly banned me. Back then. That's when, we, that's when I first had my problem with Philly. They was hollering about I couldn't come to Philly. What they would go do. So Gilly the King, or whatever the nigga name is, he jumped in my inbox and said, is there a problem, Goofy? I'll be in Dallas, and when I see you, I'm going to slap you. And my response was, nigga, you ain't never slapped a nigga who will kill you. So we've been going back and forth. So he hopped in your but, DM. Now he hopped in my DM. Okay. Remember, I screenshot it and sent it to yeah. you. Yeah, you did. I remember. So when his son, when his son got, uh, I remember being on live when the news broke that day. And, and, and one of my one of my partners, who I consider a partner, Kareem Blitz, out of New York, got on my live, and he was chastening and get Gilly, saying, "This is what you get. You promote these lyrics. You promote this energy." As a matter of fact, Gilly, when you had King Von and Dirk on y'all podcast, and they started singing the songs about smoking tuca, y'all were dancing to it. Y'all were dancing to it. When Pooh Shiesty called home from prison, and they were talking big dog talk, they wasn't rebuking that shit. When Jay Prince was on there making threats. What does that got to do with you, Charleston White? What does that have to do with you? They didn't check Jay Prince. So, nigga, y'all promote this detrimental shit. So, here I come, nigga. From day one, I've been against it. If you no, you're not against it. That's like you sitting up there talking about you don't like homosexuality, but you got somebody pickle in your mouth. Stop playing. That's like you saying you against homosexuality, but you got somebody pickle all in your face, all in your mouth, and you got pickle juice all on your shirt. Stop playing. No kid die playing gangster. I will laugh. If me and you get into it and your kid die in a car accident, I laugh. If your kid fall out the car. If your kid die in a car accident, he said he gonna laugh? You really running out of content. You really running out of content and nigga, you getting desperate. And it's starting to show. Or to get run over by a truck. I'll laugh if I don't like you. If me and you get into it and your baby get molested, I'll make mockery of your baby getting molested. So fuck your baby, nigga. 
I don't like you on your. Y'all cool with that? Y'all cool with that? Are y'all cool with that? Did you hear what he said? Kids. I'm that kind of nigga. It's no different than the gang banger nigga when they ride through our neighborhoods and shoot these guns. Knowing that there's kids in the neighborhood. It's no different when Kobe Bryant got in his helicopter. And they say, hey, Kobe, it's not safe for us to fly. And Kobe said, fly anyway. And put everybody's life in jeopardy. He didn't, he didn't consider those other people. Nigga, I don't need them sometimes. Was he on the plane to hear Kobe tell a pilot to fly anyway? First of all. Second of all, a pilot knows when to fly and when not to fly. Do you think Kobe got the power to tell a, per to, to tell a pilot? When the fly? No, he don't. Mike B, stop, stop spamming, spamming. You spamming too much. Do you really, really think he got the power to do that? None of us was on that plane to hear Kobe tell a pilot to fly in a, into a danger zone. That's the narrative that the news gave. Who sent this nigga? Charleston White, who sent you? Am I wrong? I want to be wrong sometime when a nigga fucking with me. When a nigga fucking with me, I want to be as wrong as possible. So, nigga, I want to be wrong. Gilly son and fuck Gilly. But this is how this came about. I showed that nigga some compassion, my nigga, when his son got killed. You did. You did. I openly showed compassion. And people... On, on say cheese, me. too. On say cheese. Yeah. I showed compassion. You showed compassion... Because you wanted attention. And now that your attention is starting to die down, your attention span is dying down, now you want some new attention. So you disrespecting his son. I, I poured my heart out for the man because I put myself in his shoes. Now I did this openly in front of everybody. S somebody wrote a book, an author, the author of my book. I got a children's book out. Called Every Neighborhood Needs a Mr. Charleston. Mr. Gaines wrote the book. Mr. Gaines is a former elected official out of Detroit. Out of, I mean, out of Michigan. He used to be a commissioner in Michigan. So he's wrote several books. So he's a fan of Wallow and Gillies. He's a fan of Charleston White. So by him being a fan of Charleston White and Wallow, he was hoping that he could promote the book to, to Gilly and Wallow them. So... You know, I, I openly show compassion on me. So the dude promoting the book, Mr. Gaines, uh, man, Gilly, Gilly, you know, he got disrespectful. You know, why you come working with this dude? Uh, he's a rat. He's a snitch. He ain't never been nothing in his 20s. And I'm saying, nigga, uh, is that how y'all celebrity niggas look at us? Because y'all became celebrities and, and we were single dads or raising our children while you were writing rap lyrics on the road. Nigga, we at home raising our kids, making right choices where I don't have to snitch. See, I ain't been no criminal, homie. I wasn't no criminal in my 20s. I wasn't no criminal in my 30s. I've never, I, I've never been an adult criminal. So, nigga, so, uh, I said, well, damn, this how this nigga really feel? Even if we had these feelings in the beginning, homie, when your son died, the nigga don't owe you nothing, Charleston White. Don't nobody had here no excuses. He don't owe you nothing. If he don't like you, he don't like you. Point blank, period. Went out my way and chastised a friend and told my friend, nah, homie, you wrong. Nigga, you gonna do this? So, nigga, uh, I take my compassion back. Yo, son. Nigga, as a matter of fact, I hope the killers are forgiven by God and live a long life of redemption. We're not losing sleep. I ain't lost one sleep to go over my victim. I've never lost sleep over my victim. So I pray that his killers, nigga, live a long life of redemption and don't lose one ounce of sleep over and cheese. 
And see, I want to point something out to y'all, right? About this corny ass interview, because the interview was whack. It's one of the wackest interviews I've seen with Charleston White. But what I really wanted to point out the fact that is that St. Jesus is a sucker. And the shit that he's doing on this platform, his whole motive for this interview, the whole interview was directed to letting Charleston White attack. Gilly's son is dead already. He's been, he's been dead for a little minute now. What's the point? What's the point? Saint Cheese got what he deserved, nigga. Like every gangster who died in the streets, they get what they deserve. Like every gangster go to jail, nigga, they get what they deserve. So who crying for a gangster nigga who got killed? Who feel bad because we making mockery of a gangster who got killed? Ain't this what we do in the black community? We did it with FBG Duck. We did it with Tuka. We did it with King Von. We did it with Nipsey. We did it with Tupac. We did it with Biggie. What make this boy so special when we can't joke about his death? And who made up the rule that you can't talk about? So this going on 50-year-old man. Now he's trying to convince us grown folks. Because this ain't the Toys of Us section of YouTube, my nigga. Charleston White, you got some of us fucked up. You got intellectual minds on YouTube that you're talking to. You're not talking to little boys. You're not talking to the hooligans. You're not talking to the hood boogers. You know that, right? Because the hooligans don't watch you, Charleston White. You infiltrated the conscious section, the intellectual minds, and now you acting like a nigga. And you think that we're going to accept that? Now nah, we're not accepting that. Absolutely not. Because it comes a time and a point where your jokes ain't funny no more. Niggas ain't laughing. It's but so much. You're going to watch the same comedy. And you're going to laugh at the same jokes. Them shits is getting played out, my nigga. Dead people. Show me where you can't work. Show me where you ain't supposed to talk about the dead. And then show me where karma is real. Where karma go get you for talking about the dead. I'm still waiting for white people to get their karma for slavery. Slavery lasted 400 years. How long we been... You sound stupid. It's called integrity. It's called integrity. And you put yourself in a leadership position. But now, I mean, it is what it is. When a person show you who they are, believe them. This is who he really is. Now the slavery and white folks still ain't got their karma. What about the police officer who was rehired for Tamir Rice? Mm -hmm. He ain't got his karma. So I don't believe in karma. And I think you can make fun of the dead and nothing gonna happen to you. Let me respond to this comment. Nah, don't delete her comment. Why you do that? Tatted, tatted in TV. Every comment is not to be deleted. You said, Haj, you dissing the, you dissing the dead too? No, I did not diss that man's son. Not one time did I diss his son. I said his father blood sacrificed him. That's not dissing him. That's telling the truth. I don't, I don't think y'all understand. I don't know. I'm not going to, when you make a blood sacrifice, right? When you go through the door and you make a blood sacrifice, you don't necessarily, you don't necessarily know who the angel of death is coming to get. And you don't know how they're going to die. This is something that I believe in because I believe in that don't mean that I'm dissing that young boy. When you make a blood sacrifice, it is similar to watching a movie. Um, what's that movie again? Um, where all the strange deaths was happening. I forgot the name of the movie. Where, where, where Final Destination. The movie Final Destination. Once the contract is written in blood and you made that sacrifice, your family member could die in a car accident, an airplane, could die on a table like Kanye West's mother getting the surgery? Could have a heart attack? Just out of the blue. When you sign that contract with Satan, the angel of death will come and get you in any way. This is what y'all got to understand. I would never sit up there and disrespect young cheese. The man is gone. The boy is gone already. He died a tragic death. So for Charleston White to keep continuously coming on, 
And let me tell you, I'm on this, right? If somebody come in the comment section being disrespectful, then y'all can get them up out of here. But I don't have a problem with people having a difference of opinion with me. We're not going to get that soft over here. Now, I do want to talk about the, the karma thing because you called your son on live. And, and a lot of people are, 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 are speaking about, you know, you're giving, now you're, you're letting energy into your son's life now. Now people are wishing and they know you got a son, so they want something to bad happen to your son. Somebody said, I said he got a snot box rocked. Me saying he got a snot box rocked means I'm disrespecting the dad? That's a different way of saying he got a bullet in his face. If a person got shot in his face, is it disrespectful to say he got shot in the face? If a person got stabbed in his gut, is it disrespectful to say, see, the difference is I put my own slogans on it. It's not disrespectful. It's the truth. He got his snot box rocked. That's my way of getting around the algorithm and bring up bringing awareness to the senseless violence that's going on. But because I figured out a way to make it interesting for black people to care about black death, a lot of a, a lot of other motherfuckers don't like it. Because if they do the same story and they say the same shit that I say, ain't nobody watching. Don't nobody care. So because I got graphic, very, very graphic to describe the black deaths that's going on in the black community, and I use slang so that I could get around the algorithm, you saying I'm being disrespectful? No, I'm not being disrespectful. I'm bringing awareness. There is no nice way of saying you got your TV turned off. There is no nice way to say that you got your cable, your cable subscriptions canceled. You got your electricity bill turned off. There's no nice way to say that. You said it before, I forgot. What apartment did you, you stay in in Bronx River? And what apartment did Ben Bada stay in? Stick to the topic. What kind of stupid shit is that? We're not even having a conversation about my apartment or Africa Bambada. Where your mind at? Who sent you? Who you working for? CIA, FBI, DEA? We're having a whole conversation about another topic and you all the way somewhere else. What is your agenda? Never mind. That shit ain't even making any sense. You want to know what apartment I stayed in in Bronx River 20 years ago? Huh? Who you doing homework for? Who are you doing homework for? Sometimes y'all got to pay attention to people in the comment section. That shit weird. So we could be a ha ha this and that. Well, why is YMW managed it a lot? If, I, if energy and karma is real, then let me see. Do you get energy and karma for words or for actions? Actions. Actions or words? Actions. Come on now. My son don't rap gangster. My son is not a criminal. My son is not a popular, well-known rapper walking around with jewelry. My son is unrecognizable to the world. What energy going to come for him? Is that why you mad? That don't nobody know your son? He's a nobody? And his father was a nobody the majority of your whole life? You was a nobody? And in order for you to become somebody, you sold the people on? You caring about our struggle, our pain? And act like you really, really cared. So you started attacking the gang members the same way I did. And then you started attacking the rappers the same way I did. In order for you to get notoriety. You was a crackhead, an undercover crackhead your whole life. And now, finally, somebody's recognizing you on everybody else's platform. Because when you was on your YouTube platform, you wasn't getting these numbers that I'm getting. You wasn't getting the St. Cheese numbers, so they started pushing you on other people's platform. 
the bigger platforms. But the reality of it is, which I need to start paying attention to, right? Some of these platforms are affiliated with the industry. They're part of the industry. And in order for Charleston White to be on these platforms, he's part of the industry now. Don't let him fool you. But then again, y'all already see that he was Aiden um, Aiden Ross. It's amazing how he's running with the Jewish community now after he disrespected the Jewish community. Something, something just ain't right. Because his dad said, hey, let me tease this nigga who can't call this song. So if karma and energy is real, what about all the good karma that I'm supposed to get for working with the kids? Why don't nobody ever say, hey, man, you got some good energy coming? You never heard people say that. You don't never hear nobody say that because don't nobody see you working with the kids. Don't nobody see you doing nothing good, you liar. The devil was a liar. And you starting to get caught in your lies, devil. That's why nobody's saying that. You never hear people say, hey, you've been taking care of kids for so long, you got some great karma coming. You never hear people say that. So I don't believe karma or energy. Because if energy is, is really real, when do white people get theirs for their hateful energy? All the caring. All the women who done accused niggas of wrongfully raping them. When do they get there? He didn't even think this interview through. Listen to what he's saying. He using all the stupidest shit in the world. Because he talking to the people like y'all stupid. Listen to him. What the hell does that have to do with the foul shit that he's doing? He coming up with every excuse in the world for him being a foul nigga. Oh, that sounds true. What he said is true. What he said is stupid. If somebody tell you the temperature is 110 degrees outside and it's hot, yeah. Let's go, Haas. That's right. Yeah, it's hot outside. He just told the truth. But what the hell that got to do? What, yo, what do they have to do with him disrespecting that dead boy to go viral all over again? And it didn't work. It didn't work, Charleston White, because P. Diddy's situation overshadowed, overshadowed your situation. It didn't work. And say cheese is a sucker. If karma and energy is really real, and why don't people ever say this for doing good? Why is karma always associated with bad? Why? So I don't believe in none of that shit, my nigga. I believe you reaping what you sow. You don't reap in what you say. Because if you... Don't nobody care about what you believe. We care about what you sold us and we care about the fact that everything that you said out of your mouth and we told, we believe in you is a lie. That's what we cared about. Because without the people, you wouldn't be shit. Without the people, you'd be on that same highway selling pork, remember? Selling pork to the Muslims. Really reap energy and karma in what you say. We all be in trouble for the things we say in relationships. We'll all be in trouble for the thing we say to our baby mama and our baby daddy. We'll all be in trouble for the things we say in the car when we get cut off in road rage. If karma and in He making sense to y'all? Is his excuses for being a foul nigga, is it making sense to you? It's not making sense to me. I'm sorry. It's really real. So I don't believe none of that. I don't think nothing gonna happen to my son. So what was Gilly's son, Karma? What did he do in life? What did Tamir Rice, Trayvon Martin, what, was, what Karma got them where they at? And when did George Zimmerman get his Karma? Think about this. Jo Why don't you go give it to him? You want to go viral so bad, why don't you go find George Zimmerman and give him his karma? A Zimmerman sold the Skittles in the gun. And George Zimmerman got a loss 
suit out against Trayvon Martin, mama and daddy. When do he get his karma? When do the Catholic priests get their karma for all the molestation that they did? When do the child sex traffickers get their karma? When do the politicians get their karma? Why is karma... See comments like that, Tyson Campbell? Nah, you won't be able to get away with that in my comment section, my nigga. Only for poor people. Because you never hear rich people talk about karma. Because they rob, steal, kill, and destroy. You never hear rich people talk about karma. That's a poor person's concept. And by the way, that's a Buddhist belief. Let, let me ask you this, though. Because I, I've seen you get into it with a lot of people. But don't you feel like... Anybody with that... Well, anybody with the Tyson Campbell, block them from the channel. Phase them out from the channel. Ain't no coming back. Don't delete the comment. Phase them out. They can go over there and watch academics or somebody. Get into it with, do you always got to go below the belt? Yeah. Why? I, I go to below the belt with my wife. If me and my brother argue, nigga... Ah, right, that's why your daddy don't come see you, nigga. That's why your grandma on your daddy's side died. I go, listen, I go to below the belt with anybody I have an altercation with. Because, nigga, when the gloves are off, the gloves are off. Who fight with limitations? Who put restrictions on, on fight? Well, man, you, no, nah, homie, when we into it, nothing is off limits. Even if you my woman. Yeah, that's why your daddy tried to f when you was a kid. That's why your daddy was molested when your sister. Hope got me f***ed up. Now, I'm a mean motherfucker when we argue. You better not, man, no, nah, I'm a mean motherfucker. So, no, so let me be. Because you already know what kind of mouth I got. So, let me be. Now, I mean, multiple people said you're... Let me tell you that's something, right? The only reason why I'm pointing this out is because we are getting ready to enter into some dangerous times. And you got to be careful whose voice you decide to listen to when shit hit the fan. You don't want to be following behind a nigga that sounds good one half of the time. Right? Somebody that sounds good because they're giving you this verbal masturbation and stroking your mind and stroking your ego but at the same time they got their hand in your pocket. We done seen too many people at this point in time. Like, damn, what they said the CIA? I see, yo, they spamming the hell out of the comment section. What y'all sent the CIA over there? <laughs> yo, they sent the bots in the building. <laughs> yo, make sure y'all hide them from the channel. That shit crazy. <laughs> There's no way in hell y'all can make up that many fake uh, fake accounts that fast. There's no way in hell y'all niggas is crazy. Ah. I 
I feel you, bro, but what about reparations? Nigga, you had the audacity to just ask me about reparations when you see the same people that conquered us is flooding America with border jumpers, illegals, poor people, so that they can overpopulate the hood and make it even more poor, and they giving them your tax money that you're making, and you asking for reparations. Do you, like, nigga, we are approaching the end, the end days, signs of the times when you watch Thanos, and you watch, you watch movies like The Avengers. They told you, Thanos told you his job was to reduce the world's population. When you watch Lord of the Rings, right? When you watch Lord of the Rings, you watching the war between good and evil. What part you don't understand? They tell you in their TV shows where we are going as a people, where the world is going. This has not been, this is not going to be the first nor the last time that the world is destroyed. It's not. The only question is, is where you going to be as a people when it's time to make decisions at the round table, when it's time to make decisions, will you be there to be in the leadership positions? If we're on the break of World War III, shouldn't we be positioning ourselves to sit at the table to take back a portion of what's ours? Shouldn't you be putting yourself in position to figure out what the future of America or the future of this world have for us? Because if the pose is shifting and the earth is getting ready to turn upside down and you know what goes up, goes down, you heard about places like Atlantis, but where's Atlantis right now? You heard of many different places that's legendary, especially when you listen and you watch the cartoons. They tell you about places that you think is a fairy tale, but it's really places that was really on this earth that we don't see. We have never seen. So now, who's preparing a plate at the dinner table for the lost sheep of Israel? Who's preparing a plate at the table for the slaves of America, a.k.a. the POWs, the prisoners of war? We was captured, remember that. Words are spells. Use the right spells, or rather the right words, so you can understand who you are. And for everybody that's watching, and y'all y'all watching the comment section, and y'all seeing the amount of spams that's coming through, they're purposely trying to sabotage our platform, our channel over here. This is deliberately being done. They're spamming certain things that I'm saying. I need for y'all to hit the like button if I'm going to continue on with this live. So that y'all can talk back to this algorithm. Because what you're seeing in the comment section is not normal. It's absolutely not normal. The amount of people that's coming through spamming. And it's not funny. Because it's impossible. Our numbers is going up. We almost went up to 5,000. Now the numbers is coming down. I need y'all to hit that like button. So y'all can speak back to the algorithm. Because when they spam in the way that they spam. And they doing the, the things that they doing in the comment section. It's affecting this on um, live and it, it's, it's affecting the amount of views that's going on in this live. Never mind the sleep. Your time and energy is for the select. Thank you, family. Thank you for sponsoring this war. I appreciate you. See how you you see how I got beautiful sisters actually sitting up there sponsoring this war and, 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 and showing love in the super chat. But y'all lazy asses, 
Won't even take the time out to hit the like button to get the notifications out. Like, stop playing, man. Now what's happening is YouTube is pulling people out of the live and, 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 and the numbers is going down. Banned from Philly. You say I'm banned from Philly? They, they said that five years ago. And when I went to Philly, I sold out. Yeah, they, everywhere they say I'm banned from. But, nigga, I ain't never been to Philly other than going to do a comedy show in a, uh, Atlantic City, New Jersey. I don't have a big fan base in Philly. I go with my fans all. I wouldn't go to Utah. I ain't, I ain't shit in Utah for me. I'm a Southern guy. Philly is more segregated than the South. Philly, Philly conditions, if you stay for three days, is depressing condition. Very depressing. Oh, uh, it's like the walking dead. And that's outside of Kingston. I rolled through there. Oh, you're talking, about, you talking about Kensington? Yeah, Kensington. So, it's, it's not a vibrant place. I'm a vibrant nigga. I like strip clubs. Philly ain't got no more but strip club. Got a few of them. Nigga, they ain't got like what we know. It ain't like ecstasy and shit like that, nah. That's what I'm saying. So, so to come from the south, I yeah, I can't even lie. That might have been. This might have been the worst, one of the worst Charleston White interviews I've seen in my life. But I had to point it out because I couldn't understand how Say Cheese would take a whole thirty minutes and dedicate it towards going back at Cheese because Charleston White didn't get what he wanted. Out of the first time attacking Cheese because that P. Diddy shit, it just overshadowed it all the way. It is what it is, man. I'm not even going to play no more of what Charleston White had to say, had to say because y'all pretty much get the idea. It's so much more that I want to talk about. Now, I'm not going to play. Matter of fact, Wow. So this is Michael Rappaport right now. His Instagram. These are the missiles that's being launched at Israel right now from Iran. Wow. Parker, thank you for all sponsoring this war, family. Let me give y'all my take real quick. See, it's funny, right? That shit we just seen, that's the real 4th of July. That shit look wicked. Do you understand when those missiles drop? That it's going to be on. We on the break of World War III, right? And let, and let me show you all the military mind games that we're dealing with. Everybody talking about J. Cole. See, my perspective with J. Cole, right? Normally, I would say get his moist ass the fuck up out of here. 
apologizing to Kendrick Lamar because rap is a sport to see who's the nicest. But the reason why J. Cole is apologizing instead of showing how talented he is is because he know that he was being used. He's being pimped to push this rap beef to keep us distracted for some shit that's going to affect our grandkids and great-grandkids and great-grandkids if our bloodlines is not eliminated. You hear what I'm saying to you? Y'all don't, don't realize how they just took the most elite rappers. You got Rick Ross beefing with Drake right now? You got the correction officer. Beefing with the TV actor right now. Oh, Y'all don't see what's going on? At the same time, you got future beefing with this one. You got, and while all this is going on, it was supposed to be the end of academics. But right now, he's probably live with 30 to 35,000 people watching him. So you could be entertained while missiles is falling on people's faces. And then you got Michael Rappaport all over Instagram talking about free the hostages. Nigga, there's not even one building damn near standing overseas with the Palestinians. But you talking about free ho what hostages? If there was any hostages that was taken, nine times out of ten they're not alive. There's not even nowhere to hide them. Who the fuck gonna hold on to hostages when they can't even feed themselves? Then you gotta ask yourself a question. As a people, how could you be entertained by this evil? Or rather, how could you be entertained by the industry when the level of genocide is going on right in front of your face? Do you not understand, you people that's watching me right now? Do you not understand the shit that you are seeing that is happening in front of your face is the same way that your bloodline has been erased? You really, really think that them colonizers just went over to Africa and just caught you and put you on a boat? Nigga, it was a war. And in the process of that war, our ancestors was wiped out so bad that they told you That now nah, you was just a slave. No, there was a war. Why would they feed that warrior spirit in you? You know what spirit in you was being fed? Hate. And for some reason, you wake up and you go to sleep hating yourself. Words of spells. There was a time where on the plantation, they sat up there and they put you on a stage called the strip club. That's what we going to call it. Had your black woman on a stage called the strip club selling her off to the auction block to the next plantation. Now, you got black men opening up strip clubs all around America with black women holding the pole, shaking their ass. Shake what your mama gave ya. Don't stop. Get it, get it. Pop that pussy. Doodle brown. Doodle Brown, do you not understand how the same songs we used to make up to escape the plantation where Master didn't even know what we was talking about? Now he done took these house Negroes, fed them real good, made them look real nice, gave them whips and chains. Whips and chains. They got whips and chains. So now all we doing is looking at how NASA is treating a house Negroes. Jake. I mean, J. Cole. Rick Ross. Future. Fuck up some commas. Fuck up some commas, yeah. Y'all don't get it? And the poor hate the poor while y'all worship the rich. The poor hates the poor. Why y'all worship the rich? Niggas wouldn't even piss on you if you was on fire, but y'all keep on worshiping them.
Have y'all not been paying attention to social media? That's why I keep telling y'all, hit the like button, man, because they're trying their best to keep pulling people out the live. I see it. Bringing us all the way down to 3,000 for us to get back to 4,000. Like, they're trying their best to keep our numbers down. Y'all got to start participating. Hit the goddamn like button, man. That's why, you know what? It's, it's definitely time for me to start working on my own app so I can start pulling my people over to my own app because the reality of it is I can't I can't let them decide to pull a plug on me because this is their platform this is not my platform. I don't make these rules over here. But there has to be somewhere where y'all can follow me where my notifications go out for real. So my people that supporting me can really support me for real. So I could talk to you on this internet while we still have this internet. So I could really, really talk to y'all without sitting up here bullshitting with this corny ass celebrity gossip. I've been holding this in for a very long time, man. I'm pretty sure a lot of you already knew this about me. But what I want to tell y'all tonight is I love y'all. And I hope no matter what, y'all love me. The same way I love y'all. That's why, that's exactly why all these corporate, these big industries, like all, all like all these big rap labels is going out of business because homosexuality has hijacked the music industry. Now they want to come out. I told you they want to come out and play now. Niggas is tired of hiding who they are. The industry is over. Men, how they say men lie, women lie, numbers don't. The numbers in the industry, it's over. Look at your boy. He's voguing. Is this the best that Philly has to offer? The nigga Vulcan on stage. Hip hop is over with, man. It's over. I've been holding this in for a very long time, man. I'm pretty sure a lot of you already knew this about me, but what I want to tell y'all tonight is... Look how he putting the mic in his mouth. I love y'all. I love y'all. Son got the mic in his mouth. I know y'all ain't really knew this about me. Y'all already know. Yeah, we knew, nigga. Now we definitely knew. Hip-hop done been hijacked, man. That's why it's like, yo, it's crazy how a grown man took advantage of me as a child, violated me, was a pillar of the community, made people believe he was somebody that he really wasn't while he was running around violating the children. Do y'all understand? You see who this nigga is? Do you understand those people? Mm -hmm. 
have a fetish for little boys? Do you understand them niggas got a fetish for little boys? Nah, it's not funny. It's absolutely not funny. Because do you see the power, the influence that little Uzi had? It was no different from the power that Africa Bear Bada had in the beginning when the niggas started hip hop. And then these niggas used their influence. How I say? I should say, I want to make love in the club. They used their influence to attract what? Little kids. Usher wasn't the only little boy that P. Diddy was going to bed with. Did you see how Justin Bieber was choking up when he was standing next to Diddy? I'm not worried about the shit that they talking about that Diddy did. I'm, talk, I'm worried about the shit that they ain't talking about that that nigga did. Y'all not really, really understanding, man. Y'all really not understanding. Who owns the music industry? Who owns the prison system? Who owns the air? Who owns the planes that be spraying our communities with chemtrails? Who owns the farms? Who be putting the, pesti the pesticides on our foods? Who owns the factories who be putting fluoride in our waters? Who? Who created the algorithm? Who was cutting the check for all the drill rappers in New York City and Chicago during the time that these young boys was committing genocide on each other? Who? Why is it that Rihanna felt so comfortable disrespecting the Catholic Christian community? She's dressed like a nun. Why? I told y'all, evil is tired of hiding. Evil wants to come out and play. Under my umbrella, umbrella, Ella, Ella, A, A, A. What is she saying? Ella, Ella, Ella. What is she saying? She's speaking another language and y'all don't even understand it. La, Ella. La illa la Muhammad al Rasulullah la illa 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 a a the Muslims know what I'm talking about. Who's she talking to? I don't disrespect nobody's religion. I support the real. It's first highs because from day one to current, he's real one. People are not paying attention to the real period. Just support and bless him. How says the heaven sent with a message. He's the wrestle people. Thank you, family. Appreciate you. Thank you for sponsoring this wall. The outline lifestyle. It's like yo, y'all, y'all, can't see it. Y'all can't, y'all, can't see it. or not disrespecting Christianity or any religion is something that someone should never do and it doesn't matter who you are because one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess and in the interview she literally said
says, I let God lead and just let go. That's how it's spelled in the interview, God with a lower case G. I'm not sure who that is. Like, I'm not Catholic. But that shit is disrespectful. I'm not Catholic. I'm not Christian. But that shit is disrespectful. Some shit you just don't do. If you don't agree with somebody's religion, cool. But that right there? But, again, she didn't disrespect, she wouldn't disrespect the Jewish community like that. But you know the funny part about it is? Who she is disrespecting? Can you do an interview with Jaguar, right? It will be so hype. You know what? I might actually do an interview with Jaguar, Jaguar Wright. I might actually reach out to Jaguar Wright. I might actually do that. But I want you to understand something. Sometimes the same people that goes against the industry and blows the whistle on the industry are hired by the industry to do that. I want you to understand something, right? Like Pac said, I peeped the weakness in this rap game and sold it. I peeped the weakness in this YouTube. So I incorporated celebrity gossip in my shit and, and, and it started skyrocketing on YouTube. Because what y'all have to understand is, is that part of the ritual, humiliation ritual, they will hire tabloids and all types of people to go against the same celebrities that they have to humiliate them. They use us for that. To tear these celebrities down. And they'll pay you top dollars. To, pay, to tear and smear these celebrities. But when they catch on to the fact that. Oh shit. This nigga's a ninja. He creeping in and he freeing the minds. They spend billions of dollars to keep you dumb. In the height of World War III. When we on the break of World War III, do y'all understand that the Georgia Guidestones, those tablets, the Georgia Guidestones was just destroyed last year or the year before. Missiles blew them up. In the Georgia Guidestones, it said that we are going to reduce the world's population down to 10%. Who created the Georgia Guidestones? The elite. And when they destroyed them, it was a sign of the time. Y'all don't understand what's going on? 2000 party over. Oops, out of time. So tonight we gonna party like it's 1999. What, you didn't hear the Prince song? What y'all think, it's a game? How's Iran is going? Scorch earth as Israel as we speak. Your thoughts? I don't think y'all understand. Shit is about to get real. Like you ain't never seen. The borders is open. These people already done made their list. Off of your likes. Off of your shares. And off of your subscriptions. And see, what y'all don't understand is World War III is about reducing the world's population. It's really a war on the poor people. It's too many of us. These people are that, that is in power, they are together. Iran is going to war with Israel right now. Palestine is almost on the brink of extinction in people. They're about to go extinct over there. You have so many Muslim countries all around the world. Why did it take so long and why the rest of them ain't gearing up to either stop this war or participate with it? Because Islam has been infiltrated too. I don't trust none of them Muslim leaders. I don't trust none of these Muslim leaders as far as you can throw them. I don't trust none of these Christian leaders as far as you can throw them. I trust the Jewish community more than I, 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 I trust the Muslim community. You know why? 
Because the Jewish community, if Rihanna would have disrespected them, they would have spanked her. The same way Kanye West got his ass spanked. They disrespect, they, they, yeah, the Jewish community moves like an army. They protect each other. Where the Muslims at in America? All these kids dying in the streets. Where's the Muslim leaders at? All these kids is dying in the streets. Where is the pastors? Where's the Christian leaders at? Rihanna just got on the internet and disrespected the image of the nuns, which is the image of the mother, Fatima. Fatima, the mother of the Muslims, disrespected her and at the same time disrespected the Virgin Mary. Because that image that Rihanna is attacking, that she put on, that is not just a, a Catholic look. That is a Muslim look that she attacked. Where's the unity at? Every, all of these, all of the men, whether it be the, the, the Christian leaders, the Muslim leaders, have taken a safe, a safe, coward position. And you niggas, even you niggas, with them 501c3s and bullhorns walking through the Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, whatever group you with, stop going outside when the shooting happened and talking on the blocks with a bullhorn. Y'all know who the shooter is. You know what set they claim and you know what a fuck apartment they live at. Why are you outside with a bullhorn? If you really want to clean up the community, come and knock on a door. Knock on a nigga door. You got babies being aired out on the block and y'all running around with bullhorns. Because if it would have been my family, shut the fuck up. I hate when coward niggas say, if it would have been my family. Nigga, it is your family. It's your community. Niggas walking around with bullhorns. No, just shut up. The hood has been infiltrated, man. I'm scared to death of them niggas in the hood. I'm more scared of the niggas in the hood that's coming home from jail with them bullhorns than I'm scared of the little killers out there. Because you niggas is compromised. You're happy with that 501c3. The Black Panthers ain't get that 501c3. They got a straight ticket to hell. But now all of a sudden, these politicians... The rock to sleep game, yo, the rock to sleep game is crazy. The rock to sleep game is crazy right now. We so infiltrated that it ain't even funny. We are so infiltrated as a people that it ain't even funny. We infiltrated. The war on us ain't never stop. We are in the worst position that we have ever been in in life. We are in the era where we have all the answers that we possibly need to help us get it more advanced in life. And you know what we're doing? Getting high. Every time you get on Facebook, you get on Instagram, all you seeing is black women showing their asses. Our ancestors stood on a stage being, di being displayed, being displayed by the colonizer during the days of slavery, naked, crying. They were naked, crying, and they were shamed. They were shamed. And let me tell you something, man. Don't tell me nothing about, oh, we walked around naked. No, we didn't. Nigga, America is cold. The majority of America is cold. Even in the South, you wasn't walking around with no goddamn thong in your goddamn ass because the temperature drops down to damn near 20 degrees. Stop lying. You wore clothes in America. Stop believing that Neanderthal shit, the black Neanderthals that they sell you, that we was running around in Africa looking tribal with, with, with Indian feathers. It's bullshit. Technology has always been here. From the beginning of time. So when you seen a person or a tribe or a village that was out of tune 
with technology? Why do you think back in the days, if you was considered to be a witch, they would set you on fire and burn you? And if you had a cell phone, you was considered to be a witch. You know why? Because the people who survived doomsday back in those man-made doomsday days, when man destroyed the earth with technology over and over again and told you that God was responsible? When man? I told y'all before, when you go back to the you go back to the pyramids and you look in the pyramids, you see jet fighters, you see nuclear bombs, you see nuclear weapons. When you go back to the pyramids, it's written on the fucking walls because the people who, who made those pyramids, you know, the aliens, they were warning you that you were destroying you. The people in power been in power and they're not going to let their power go through a vote. And Trump done played himself and showed where he's at. He's spoken. Trump is standing with Israel. The same people That's putting the pressure on the Palestinians is the same people that got their foot on our neck over here. Who brought y'all to understand? Everything that comes out of TV is made to destroy us. Everything that comes out of the radio is made to destroy us. They took the love out of the music. They took the, the, the Cosby show. The TV shows that were sacred to us, that made it feel good to be a family, has been corrupted. Don't nobody want to watch the Cosby show no more. Now people want to see reality TV. Niggas is watching that retarded ass nigga Drewski. Who wants to watch Drewski? Y'all in love with Drewski? The clown nigga that 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 um that what's the name from Cash Money chased? And just so happened to have the cameras rolling, the world is a stage. Cosby wasn't a no-no. Why was Cosby a no-no? Cosby wasn't touching nobody kids. Cosby was partying with them rich devils or with them devils that was around the industry. And the reality of it is, yo, y'all got to be careful. Y'all got to be careful because I don't give a fuck about Cosby. Cosby had a lot of fucked up shit to say about black people. But then again, I'm not even mad at him because you know what? At this point in time, I got a lot of fucked up shit to say about black people. We ain't shit. And most of us ain't going to amount to be shit. And me, part of me, I'm really, really ready to sit back in the cut and go low for a little while so I can watch what's really getting ready to come to us as a people because I already told y'all so. And every time I open up my mouth, I told y'all, they showed me the numbers that I could do. Last live I did, I had 9,000 people watching me. Now you see how they won't even let me get to 5,000 because they're showing me. What they want me to do is keep y'all entertained and stupid during doomsday. If I could keep y'all filled with celebrity gossip and away from this war and what's really getting ready to come to us because you, you people, you ever watched the movie The Titanic? You are equivalent to the movie The Titanic. The ship is sinking and in the movie while the ship was sinking, instead of the parents going to get a life raft and fighting to get their kids off the boat, you know what they was doing? They were singing them lullabies. rock a baby on the treetop. You are being entertained while you are speeding to an ugly grave. All I'm going to tell you is make sure you got your soul right. Make sure your soul is intact. Because if your soul ain't intact, no one knows the hour. Like the solar eclipse that happened. See, what y'all don't understand is 
during solar eclipse, there's sacrifices that's happening, whether you see them or not. You, Of course, you're not going to pay attention to the missing children. You know, back in the days, they used to be on the milk carton. Of course, you're not going to pay attention to that. You too busy being entertained to not understand that the ugliness, you know, Islam during the month of Ramadan, the shaitan was locked up. But during the solar eclipse, he was released when they opened up that portal with CERN. And during these solar eclipse, as soon as the solar eclipse happened, what are we looking at right now? Missiles being dropped back and forth between Iraq and Iran. Do y'all understand why you watch me on tele television right now? China and Russia is getting prepared to join this war? Who? Huh? China and Russia got nukes. Do you not understand that China and Russia has nukes? And see, what y'all got to understand, at the end of all of this is the Dijel, the Antichrist, Lucifer himself, the one world leader, is getting ready to take his position in power. He's getting ready to take his position in power. This earth is about to get ugly. I know, I know you don't believe in God. I know you don't believe in religion. But the devil believes in you and the devil is in power right now. Do you not understand that? This is the beginning of the end. But no man knows the hour. Nor the time. But I tell you one thing. You better get right or get left. Because when you die. Filled with sin. And you didn't take that spiritual bath. You will have no blessings. You will have no life in the afterlife. If they drop a, drop a nuclear bomb right now, if a nuclear bomb goes off right now, most of you that's watching going to die in sin. You're doing something that goes against the laws of God, against the laws of the universe. You're going against, you're going against galactic war, laws. Do you realize that we don't need oil? That the oil that is being taken from the earth is like the blood being taken from your body. How long do you think that we're going to keep on doing the things that we're doing to this earth before even the earth itself turns on us? There's but so much you can do what we're doing and continue to do that before the earth itself decides to spank us. Mm -hmm. I'm 33 years old from Ohio and I definitely watched that old shit to give me that old school love and comfort. Even the cartoons from the 90s, New York undercover living single, Cosby's, Martin, everything is better than what we have right now. Everything. The devil is more stronger now than ever because we gave him the strength. If you want to take the power back, all you got to do is stop playing the game. If you want to take your power back, all you got to do is stop playing the game. Money don't make the world go round. People do. Money don't not money do not make the world go around. People do. We are in trouble as a people, man. We in trouble. And the only thing that you can do, I know some of y'all don't have the power to move out of the communities. Get your mind out of Babylon. Get your mind out of Sodom and Gomorrah. You got to get your mind out of Babylon. It's like being in prison. You are living in a prison. Righteous people. The people of God are living in prison because we are forced to watch wickedness every day. We are forced to be reminded we are being tempted by evil every day. 
And living in poverty, I meant you do some shit that you ain't got no business doing. Grown ass people looking to be accepted. Grown ass people looking to be accepted. By who? Let me see something real quick. No, this ain't the one. <laughs> Yo, you know what's killing me? You know what's killing me? Y'all on Facebook? Do you see how people are using the AI? Mm -hmm. How people are using the AI to make they self look up, look like an animated version of themselves that they never look like? You got a bunch of old, ugly bitches putting a picture Inside, inside that AI and coming out looking like cartoons that they never, ever looked like. Ever, ever. And every day they posting themselves up looking like this image of who they don't look like. There you look, right? Nah, that's not what I wanted. Right there. Look. That's the reals. Look, let's go through the ribs. Let's have some fun with this. Next rail. Let's go through the rails. My bad. I got to take that music out. Show the ass. Bingo. There you go. This is the reals. This is all I'm seeing. This is all I'm seeing on social media. This is the mothers of the next generation, the future generation. This is what black women are doing all over social media. This is where we at. Mac, thank you for sponsoring the war. Can't throw any TV. The inter this internet has brought out the true nature of these females. Now, nah, it's not the internet brought out their true nature. What it is is that. We have no family structure. And some of these women are trying to get attention. We are living in poverty and pain. And now there's a reward for our women to be whores. Because the reality of it is enough men ain't being men and taking care of their responsibility. So what's happening is, is that now you got these women prostituting themselves on the internet to provide. Because the men ain't providing. And welfare ain't enough. So then now you got these other women seeing these women getting all the attention and they want the attention too. So what the fuck do our children have to look up to? How do I tell my daughter to stay off of the pole and not twerk and not show her ass when this is what the majority of women are doing? The majority rules. When the parents 
tell their children no. The parents become the enemy to their children until their children go out into the world and get devoured by the world. Then they come back later saying mom and dad was right. Mom and dad trying to tell you right from wrong every day. But the peer pressure of Sodom and Gomorrah, the peer pressure of Babylon is devouring. The apple is being eaten every day. The most evilest shit in the world is surrounded by beautiful things. The same things that'll make you laugh, that'll make you cry. How do these people not understand that your family stood next to the 44th president? They, they, <laughs> they don't know it about looking past the right, but the spirit, it says a lot. You both have spiritual call, special callings. Yep, my sister and, 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 and her husband, Sure enough, and her kids, sure enough, been to the White House and been around the president and been amongst them. Me, I'm never going to get that invite. Of course not. They never going to give me that mic to speak. They never going to give me that mic to speak because if all I need is one mic, you know how Nas said all I need is one mic? You give me one mic, I'm going to tell you. When are y'all going to restore us? You know who you are? It's like you are the prince of Zamunda. You are the prince. But the thing about it is you don't know that you are the heir to the throne, black people of America. You are the heir to the throne. And you think that the enemy is going to give you back your crown? You think that the enemy is going to give you back your castle? You think that they're going to give you back your land? I mean, they're willing to give it to the people jumping over the border. And I'm just laughing because, yo, you ever, yo, let me tell you something, man. In the hood, one thing I learned from the streets, because these niggas act like I'm not a street nigga, but they know behind the scenes, they done heard niggas that tell them that be a poppy was on some shit back in the days. Yeah, I really, really was that nigga. And I'm telling you, the rock, the sleep game. When Trump really shows his real hand, when he plays his real hand. The next steps and stages that we are going through, if Trump do get in office, Biden is not, like, Biden is a dysfunctional old, the, the niggas on the verge of old timers, old, old timers. Everybody knows that. Trump, Trump is inheriting World War III. And when Trump get in office and there's a full-fledged war, I don't think you understand. You might as well spend and enjoy the moments that you have with your family and your friends right now. Because within these next five years, half this population is going to be gone. I don't think you understand. Every day, there's a new art news article with some new plague and famine that's popping up. Every day, there is a new plague popping up. Every time I turn around, there's an article warning us, warning, warning. They're telling you that our water, our water supplies is about to get poisoned. They're telling you that the enemy is going to poison our water supplies. Are y'all getting prepared for that? Are you ready? Three days without water, you're done, done, done. If you drink that rain water coming out of the sky, out of the skies, that's filled with chemtrails, because you caught it in a bucket and you drink, do you think that boiling that water is gonna take the chemicals out of that water? Are you are you dumb? If you, you do you do you understand the cancers that's gonna form inside your gut? And all through your veins and all through your bones. Drinking that water filled with barium? Chemtrails? Do you not understand what you're facing? Boiling water is going to make it worse. 
you boiling chemicals and you making those chemicals. You can't boil you chemicals out of water. You can kill the germs, but you can't kill the chemicals. You have to have something to take the chemicals out of the water. And then even that that's used to take the chemicals out of the water is still going to make you sick. People think they drink in healthy water, but they have been deceived. Of course we've been deceived. You know what the future consists of? You're going to need a pill for everything. Everything? Everything. You're going to need a pill for everything. A pill to go to sleep. A pill to lose weight. A pill to get your vitamins. There's no vitamins. There's no vitamins and minerals inside the fruit no more. People are eating and they're still being hungry. You're drinking water and you're still being thirsty. Niggas that drink eight cups of water and still be thirsty. I see why J. Cole fell back out of that beef. It was a deeper meaning to that with J. Cole. I grew up on quarter juice and they said the same thing. We will be all right. No, we're not all right. That's why we can't elevate mentally. We're not all right. Look at you don't see the state of our people. That's why we like that because we was drinking quarter water. That's exactly why we like that. You know what's funny? What people don't tell you or they don't show you? You ever notice how you see a bunch of rest in pieces where people are telling their family members to rest in peace on Facebook, but they never show you the conditions of their family member that died? They never tell you that their family member that passed away died the worst death. I just seen a, a, a video of my Uncle Larry, who was a pastor, that my cousin Vaughn posted up today. Mm -hmm. And I looked at the video that she posted up. And I remember look, like looking at the old Larry. The warrior. And then I looked at the video. Of my uncle. And seeing what my uncle looked like. I'd rather die. Than fade away like that. The nigga look horrible. And you know what got him looking like that? The fucking fool. The shit niggas is eating and the shit niggas is drinking. Got you with diabetes. You ever seen somebody with diabetes have to go to dialysis? What you talking about? You know how many black men in the South is going to dialysis because all they drinking is them fucking Pepsis and them juices because that South water is nasty? Do you see the conditions of our people? People are saying, rest in peace to their family members, but they won't tell you how they died. When black people die today, it's a secret. When black people die today, they never tell you why niggas is dying. Yo, Haas, what do you think about O.J. Simpson's death? Rest in peace to O.J. Simpson. And I'm going to make a separate video talking about this. You know why? Let me tell you about O.J. Simpson, right? O.J. Simpson, you know why I love O.J. Simpson? For one reason. I don't believe O.J. killed that girl. But what I love about O.J. Simpson is the fact that OJ when the police came to get him 
he became a runaway slave. When the police came to get OJ, he's a field nigga. He's a house nigga. Me, I'm a runaway slave. That nigga, yo, I don't understand how dudes will go outside and murder somebody and then turn themselves in. Do you understand that the court system is going to put your lights out? OJ said, I'm out. The nigga was on the highway to the danger zone. That nigga was on the highway bugging with helicopters chasing him. With police cars chasing him. That nigga was bugging. That's the realest shit that I've ever, ever seen from a celebrity. OJ Simpson did the realest shit. That nigga said, you, you got to catch me. What's up with these street niggas? OJ Simpson is a football player. When they sent the wolves out, the police, whoop. Woo, that's the sound of the poke. That nigga OG's OJ Simpson said, What? Take the what and leave the up to jail? You gonna put me in? Nigga said, Catch me if you can. I'm the gingerbread man. You better have the gun in hand, cuz man. <laughs> OJ said, Nah. That's why I will always love OJ. And then the crazy shit about it is the nigga OJ said, Nah. Do rags, do rags starting to hurt my head. The nigga OJ said, nah. He said, oh, y'all got my trophies? Y'all got my ornaments? Y'all got all my shit that I accumulated over in this. Yo, the nigga stuck the warehouse up to get his shit back, and I respect him. OJ Simpson was gangster. He did some gangster shit. These bitch-ass niggas will go outside. Shoot up a whole block and then turn themselves in. And then turn you turned yourself in. Yeah. I, Mr. C. You know. What bothered me about Mr. C's death. I'm not gonna even get into the part the part of of, of 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 that 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 like that the fruity tooty side of that nigga. Cause I'm disgusted in that. I ain't gonna sit up here and act like I ain't disgusted. I'm not gonna be like everybody else. Mr. C was a nasty nigga. He was nasty. But he was like a brick in the building of hip hop that we will never get back. And it's scary because those of us that's been around the 90s and seeing hip hop become or the rap game become Where it is now, it's sort of like watching a movie, The Last Samurai. You watch the movie, The Last Samurai, you see how they came in with the train tracks and they killed off the old ways. Mr. C represented the old ways of hip hop. He represented the golden era of hip hop. He represented going from Big Daddy Kane to Biggie Smalls as the illest. Live from Beth Gustavuson, the loudest one. Like, it's over. We are going into a new age. And our, our elders, our peers are being buried. That's why I told y'all before in the live, but I'm going to tell y'all again. Like, If you are watching me right now and you still have your mother, go hug her. Tell your mother how much you love her. Because you're going to wake up one day and she's not going to be here. 
and you're not going to get the opportunity to tell your mother how much you love her. Spend as much time with your mother as you can. Because there's going to be days where you're going to find yourself driving in the car or just walking down a block or a song just comes on on the radio and you're going to bust out crying because you will never be able to pick up the phone and call her again. We done seen Michael Jackson, rest in peace. Prince, rest in peace. Whitney Houston, rest in peace. Freddie Jackson, you are my lady. Luther Vandross, K. Slay. And let me say this, right? Y'all know most of the time I was doing my lives, Hassan Kim, who was drunk as shit. This is water. This is water. I'm very, very much sober. Just finished fasting for the month of Ramadan. I am so focused. So when I say K Slay, and when I brought up the situation, because I was disgusted, I stand on what I said. I'm going to still stand on That don't mean I didn't love K Slay. I was just disgusted, and it came out what he did. You know what I mean? But for the most part, K. Slay was a big part of hip hop. He's not here anymore. Biggie Smalls, Tupac, not here anymore. Some of the best of the best, like, to, 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 to not even have a long drawn out, like, yo. We are moving closer and closer to the grave. We here today and we going tomorrow. Cherish the people that you love while they're here. Who should we vote for? There's nobody to vote for. There's nobody for... Listen, let me make it... Like, unless you voting for little offices like the punk-ass mayor, little, like, Bronx president and shit like that, voting for the president is bullshit. It's the biggest Jedi mind trick ever. The votes did not get Trump into office. The elite did. Votes didn't put him in office. The elite did. It doesn't matter who's sitting at the table being the president. The president does not make any decisions. The Rothschilds do. The Bilderbergs do. It's the elite, the bankers. You could call them the Illuminati. You could call them the 13 families. You could call them whatever. You could call them whatever the fuck you want to call them. Call them Thanos. But if you think that they're going to allow you and your vote to shift the world's power and give them the world that they have taken from you, you're stupid. It don't matter who's in office. You are about to be a cyber slave. To this new digital currency that's coming. You are about to be a part, if you're lucky, if you're lucky to survive. The earthquakes, the earth is talking. The earth is talking. That earthquake that just happened in New York, or rather that New York felt the effects of, that's just... The beginning of the end. Do you people understand that these people got maps of what the future of America is going to look like? Newsflash, most of New York is not going to be here. Especially New York City. The coastlines is about to be destroyed. Y'all better wake up. Keep on focusing on Kendrick Lamar. The sons of Satan. Everybody in that industry 
that is at the top of the rap game took an oath to deceive you and keep you entertained while evil is lurking on this earth. Who's that creeping in your window, blow? While you watching TV, somebody creeping in your window still in the kid. It's the world we living in. Are you not entertained? There will be no more subways because they underwater. Nah, I think you got it messed up. You know why? Because if you do your homework, do you realize some of these subways, the ones that they want to save, they got, they got doors that they made to seal off the subways. The Holland Tunnel, they created a door that they closed. They got a door to where that they could keep the water from going up under that Holland Tunnel. Certain subways, they got doors. They got doors that we that we that we ain't been paying attention to where they could seal certain subways because certain subways lead to the underground cities. Certain subways, there's underground cities, even in New York. So where that when New York get flooded underwater, they have a train that we don't have access to that goes all the way from New York. To California, some say within an hour's time. That train is so fast that's under this, it's under, it goes under the earth and travels from New York to California in under an hour. Y'all better wake up and pay attention to what's really going on. What's really, really going on? What's really going on? I don't give a damn about Rick Ross, this and Drake. It's a distraction. I refuse to sit up here while missiles is falling and sit up there and talk about that corny shit that Rick Ross said to Drake. Most of us that seen that video that's circulating with Drake, with, where he got cum all on his face. That's Drake. That's Drake. And how you know it's Drake is because when you put that shit up on Instagram, they snatching it right back down. Y'all seen that video? Drake got jism all on his face. Like, stop playing. We already seen the pictures with Rick Ross damn near kissing Diddy. Let's stop playing, man. Nigga, I'm too old to be I'm too old to be saying pause. If it's real, it's real. I'm too old to be saying pause. I'll leave that shit to Cameron and Mace. Y'all niggas be bugging, man. This rap, these rap beefs that's going on right now, it doesn't even feel like hip hop. This shit feels so staged. That's why, yo, J. Cole apologized for a reason. Normally, I'll be dissing J. Cole, telling him to get his moist, sensitive, punk ass the fuck up out of here. This is hip hop. We want to see hip hop. We want to see. We we want to see the slick talking. We want to hear that the bridge is over, the bridge is over. Blah, blah, blah. That's the era I come from. But the reality of it is J. Cole knows that they threw a switch and sent him to do the devil's work and keep you distracted during doomsday. Nigga, you don't see what the earth is going through? We just went through from a solar eclipse to watching Iran and Israel throw missiles. This war that's going on is prophetic. It's prophecies being Fulfilled or you're not entertained? You should be scared. If you knew what I knew right now, you would laugh less and cry more. You niggas is laughing when you're the joke. How you think shit funny when you're the joke? You the class clown that's making all the jokes in the classroom. All the kids is laughing as they pass their test because they only looking at you shooting spitballs and being entertaining, but you getting left back and they passing. Everybody else is superseding us and passing us in life. Everybody else is passing us in life. You the joke.
How do we survive? It ain't meant for all of us to survive. It's not meant for all of us to survive. It's not meant for all of us to survive. Fix your soul. Fix your character. Love your neighbor. Pay attention to your circle before they hurt you. Because just because you love them don't mean they love you back. Just because you love them don't mean they love you back. Live every day as if tomorrow is not promised because it's not. Tomorrow ain't promised. Live every day as if tomorrow is not promised because it's not. Yeah, they got the red cow. I'm not worried about them sacrificing the red cow. I'm worried about them sacrificing you, soldier boy. You. I'm not worried about them sacrificing the red cow. I'm worried about them sacrificing you. I told you before, I'm going to tell you again. They're building smart cities. Smart cities. Futuristic cities. How do you think they're going to get you into those cities? By destroying the old cities, my nigga. The earth is going to going through a pole shift. They're telling you it's global warming. When they get finished turning those machines on and shaking the earth because even though the poles are shifting and mother nature is going to spank your ass, they're going to also rig the game just to make sure whatever mother nature don't wipe out, they are going to wipe out so that they can keep their control because everything is about power. Nature is very strong, but just imagine when you're dealing with nature or you think you're dealing with nature, but somebody is actually enhancing the tornadoes. Somebody's enhancing the earthquakes. Just imagine somebody's enhancing the rain when you're getting 40 days of rain. You got certain people in China that's painting the top of the roofs of their house this color blue. It's this color right here. It's between this color, no, and this color around here. What are they protecting their houses from? Who are they protecting their houses from? What do they know that we don't know? The same blue in Hawaii. Come on, man. Y'all got to start waking up and, and really, really thinking. Like, is nature so foul? that the storms hate poor people the poor people of hawaii was annihilated but rich ass oprah and the rich ass rock all the, all the houses is still intact but the old the, but the poor people they caused was burned 
Their houses was burnt. Shit, where? Blue is the color of healing. Now, I don't know if that was CERN that did that. That's laser technology. That might be Project Blue Bing. That's laser technology that did that. But you know what? I have a feeling that when this alien invasion happens, when this staged fake alien invasion happened, I have a feeling that the weapons that's going to be used to destroy civilization and to get people into these smart cities that's already being built, I have a feeling those are the weapons that's going to be used, an advanced weapon that we're not used to seeing. I don't think it's just going to be missiles with the World War Three. No, I don't think it's just going to be that. I think it's going to be those beams. It's going to be those beams. White men out here winning Nobel Prizes while niggas sitting there worried about Diddy. Diddy is one of the biggest distractions that they're using, us, using on us right now. And being that Diddy is getting a little faded out and played out. He's getting a little faded out and played out. Now what they're doing is... They activating J. Cole, Kendrick Lamar, Rick Ross, um, Future. Like, damn. When the fuck you ever seen some shit like this? They turned up celebrity gossip all the way on you stupid niggas. In this, in this business was, was going to Diddy parties We just was at a Diddy party at the Ned That shit was crazy now all, of a, now all of a sudden Now all of a sudden nobody talking about Oh going to a Diddy party what, like, it, You ever been invited to a party or any party? Right Every top chick with, that was from the city or Philly or everywhere was there Like what I mean it was a party I think y'all 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 reaching with some of this shit y'all talking about. It be the that be so delusional and never been invited to no party, never had access to no party, running around talking about don't let me find a picture of you in a Diddy party. Shut the shut up. Not gonna lie to you. Listen, Diddy had a party at the oh, Ned recently, like a couple of months ago when they dropped that album. That was a good party. I don't know what you. I don't know what you're talking about. Well, if Homeland Security is reaching, like y'all, y'all just go for anything. But listen, sit back and watch what happens. Then that's all I can tell you. I ain't here to say one. I'm not here to go one way or another. Or another. You talking about parties that y'all over here talking about parties and events that y'all never was invited in. Y'all never had access to. Y'all never been involved. You sitting around in your house or in your basement or in your mom's basement or at work judging that you ain't never going to be in the, in, the, in the company of. Who we talking to? What we really talking about. Who's he talking to? and sitting in houses that's easily to be broken. But, but, but we, who you judging? What? Who we talking about? Who you talking to? Who is he talking to? Did y'all hear him? Who is he talking to? Because it's funny, right? He said, y'all niggas, first of all, if you listen to him carefully, he said, keep watching, though, like he know nothing ain't doing and nothing ain't going to happen to Diddy because he know all this shit is staged. But when he's sitting up there, he talking about y'all niggas never been invited. Now it's funny, right? Because so you telling me Uncle Murder and 50 Cent was never 
invited to Diddy's party because Uncle Murder and 50 Cent. I'm confused, Mano. I'm confused. You saying niggas ain't even been to a Diddy party? 50 been to a Diddy party? 50 been to plenty Diddy party. As a matter of fact, according to 50, Diddy tried to take him shopping. So, Mano, who are you talking to? Because last time I checked, there's a lot of celebrities that's talking about Diddy. Cat Williams said Diddy tried to pay him $50,000. I mean, $50 million. So who you talking about? I'm a little confused, Mano. Sometimes you need to put an address on it because are you addressing me? Or are you addressing them? Because 50, your, your man, Uncle Murder, the one that did a whole album with you, the yellow mixtapes, he said no Diddy. So is this Uncle Murder you talking to? Or are you talking to me? Inquiring minds want to know, my nigga, who you talking to? I got to play that again because it's like, yo, listen to the nigga. Who's he talking to? Last time I checked, half the celebrities was flipping on Diddy. So you saying that the celebrities ain't been to Diddy house? Who you talking to? Why are you so mad about what's going on with Diddy, Mano? Why are you so mad about what's going on with Diddy, Mano? Somebody in this in this business was, was going to Diddy parties. We just was at a Diddy party at the Ned. That shit was crazy. Now it was everybody in this business was going to Diddy parties. So there we have it. Mano likes to party with Diddy too. And then the nigga got nerve enough. He got nerve enough. Look at his face. The nigga got a filter on his face. He has a filter. Got his face looking like he got mascara. The truth gonna come out, man. These niggas that you think is tough. These some live ass Omars. Now all of a sudden. Now all of a sudden nobody talking about oh, going to Diddy play. What like it? You ever been invited to a party or any party? Like, right. you have. So you mean to tell me that Diddy went all out his way to party with Fab, but he didn't really, really want to party with you, Mano? <laughs> Take the what? Every top chick with that was from the city or Philly or everywhere was there. Like, what I mean, it was a party. I think Mano, did those chicks have dicks? Did those chicks have dicks? Inquiring minds want to know. We know how Diddy get down. We know how the industry get down. Take that, take that. Huh? Y'all reaching with some of this shit y'all talking about. It be the that be so delusional and never been invited to no party, never had access to no party, running around talking about, don't let me find a picture of you in a Diddy party. Shut the shut up. Listen, Diddy had a party at the Ned recently, like a couple of months ago when they dropped that album. That was a good party. Mayno, what was the best part about that Diddy party?
You making me want to take a drink now. <laughs> I'm sober, y'all. I haven't had a drink in a minute. Yo, Mano, what was the best part about that Diddy party? Huh? Inquiring minds, because I ain't never been to a Diddy party. And I don't want to go to a Diddy party. But I would like to know from you, what was the best part of that, about that Diddy party, my nigga? <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. Well, if Homeland Security is reaching, like, y'all just go for anything. But listen, sit back and watch what happens then. That's all I can tell you. Sit back and watch what happens then. That's all I could tell you. Mayno was talking like he knows something. Like he know that this distraction is only a distraction and they only spanking Diddy. Just a, just, it's just a little bit of his humiliation ritual. But if you listen to Mano, he's talking as if he's confident that Diddy is going to be all right. What do Mano know that we don't know? As 50 Cent gears up to do this own Diddy Did It documentary. Huh? Yeah, what happened? You outside right now? All right, I'm live. I'm opening the door for you. I got a part of me. That's my baby. <laughs> Mano's at the door. Nah, Mano ain't at my door. <laughs> oh. Like, come on, man. talking about parties and events that y'all never was invited to. Y'all never had access to. Y'all never been involved. You sitting around in your house or in your basement or your mom's basement or at work judging that you ain't never going to be in the, in, the, in the company of. What we really talking about. What we really talking about, Mayno, is the fact that you got niggas like Cat Williams that's telling us what happens at Diddy Parties. He's telling us what happens at Diddy Parties and we believe them. So why are you trying to take us in another direction where you got niggas exposing them? So what you think, Mano, we saw how Diddy get down on Drake Champs. We saw him. We ain't even got to play that again. We saw him. We watched him with our own eyes. And Cat Williams said that Diddy likes to party. And Diddy don't like no for an answer. So what are you talking about, Mano? Why are you trying to protect Diddy? Mano, Jermaine, why are you trying to protect Diddy's penis? Mm -hmm. Mano, why are you trying to protect Diddy's pickle? Or Mano, are you are you Diddy's pickle spokesman? Mano, 
are you the spokesman for Diddy's dick? Inquiring minds want to know because you have credible, credible celebrities that's been to Diddy's parties telling us about Diddy and you trying to protect Diddy. Something, something just ain't right. Man, you know why are you trying to protect Diddy's pickle? Throwing mm -hmm. stones and sitting in houses that's easily to be broken. But, what, but we, who you judging? What? What are we talking about? Who we talking about? So he basically like, and you got to listen to these niggas because may know you're not no bigger than me. I'm sorry. You a celebrity and I'm a celebrity as well. You're not. Your ego was too big. But listen how he talk about the people that sitting in the house and their mama's house and in their own house and their own basements. Nigga, these celebrities heads is too big. They talk to the people like y'all peons. Nigga talking to you like you peons. Nigga half-ass made it. Y'all go tell Mano I said his new name is the Pickle Protector. <laughs> Y'all tell Mano I said his new name is P. Diddy's Pickle Protector. He's the Pickle Protector. I said it. Nigga says some people cool with spike drinks. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I mean, that shit crazy, right? It's crazy. Like when you sit back and 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 and, and you think about it, man. The niggas a doodle bandit. Mano's protecting it. You sitting up there, you trying to protect a doodle bandit. Like what's really good? I don't care if P Diddy never get charged. I don't care if he beat the case. We know that nigga foul. You know how many dudes I know. That committed a murder and was found not guilty? And I know for a fact niggas was guilty? Do you know how many people I know? Murder cases or cases, period, but murder are the easiest cases to beat. If you do not have a motive, you beat the case already. If you have a motive, you better have a way around that shit because that's all it takes to convict you. Diddy did it. Point, point blank period. He did it. Nigga spent $30 million to stay out of court. And you like that's why it would be killing me, man. Niggas is foul. Your highest Dow Joe's followers going to con going to consist of mostly women in a time like these. This ain't no surprise. You know, half these men is women. That's the sad part about it is half these men is suckers. Women can't find strong men out here no more. Strong men are hard to find.
Breaking news coming out with more updates of the conflict that's taking place in the Middle East right now as Iran is launching waves of attacks on Israel. We're also hearing that Russia has joined in their support with Iran as the United States stands and defends Israel. And we are hearing that the conflict is increasing and also to brace and prepare for the next 10 days. This is just the beginning we're hearing of potential massive waves of attacks coming and that there will be a response from Israel for the first time ever is Zion's wing, which is essentially Israel's Air Force One is airborne. Now, make no mistake, there's been a little bit of conflicting information going on. There is no one in Zion's wing that is flying above the airspace. It is simply to make sure that just in case um, airports uh, locations are hit as targets, that it will not go down. But Benjamin Netanyahu and his cabinet are underground at this time, preparing for their responses. They're saying there will be a response. This will be escalating. And as I mentioned, sides are being drawn. We're hearing that Russia is providing support to Iran, the United States, Britain. They are standing by Israel's side. And actually, several dozens we're hearing of the drones that have been making their way across from Iran to Israel. They've been shot down as it is essentially a four or five hour journey. Israel saying that they are prepared, that they have been ready for attacks for weeks. Uh, they have known that this is coming. They actually have uh, fighter jets circling around ready to defend them. They also have the Iron Dome. They have arrows, uh, missile defense. They have David Sling. They have everything ready at this time. Now I'm gonna be sharing with you the latest information uh, on the updates coming out as they're saying this is intensifying and a lot of people saying um, we're seeing it everywhere that this could essentially be the next step to World War Three as sides are being drawn. And I'm going to share. Are you not entertained? See, that's what white Mer that's what white America talking about. This is what white America is focused on the shit that we supposed to be focused on. But meanwhile, in Niggerville. In the urban section of YouTube, these niggas got you talking about these celebrities. You the next 10 days, they're saying things are going to intensify. So this is merely the beginning. This is day one of 10. And that is because they have clarified that Iran's airspace is officially down. They have said for 10 days because they anticipate and expect that they will be launching attacks in the airspace over the course of the next 10 days. And I saw several people suggesting that they believe that this was simply a response to what has happened in Damascus. But we're hearing no, that they have amplified this. In addition to drones, there are also ballistic missiles and cruise missiles that have been fired as well. Waves and waves going from Iran towards Israel. It is escalating to the point where many are saying this will be war and that this could be World War III. Now, let me go ahead and share with you the latest information on this. In the black section of YouTube, niggas is dissing J. Cole because he don't want to give you a rap battle. He don't want to give you no eight mile shit like Eminem. Because he realized what's going on. See, in the real world, we sitting back and we watching Rick Ross, the biggest boss. He indirectly told you to go build your doomsday bunker. He just showed you that he got farm animals. The nigga's rich. He has farm animals on his property. You go to the supermarket. He goes to his backyard. You go to the supermarket, he goes to his goddamn farm. You get it? He goes to his farm. He could go outside and kill a chicken. When the power goes out, all your all the food in your refrigerator is going to go bad. B A D. Bad. Fuck, I got to talk to y'all like children? Notice when I started playing this shit, look at the numbers now. Oh, it just shot back up from 3,500. They pulling people out of the building. They pulling you out of the building.
guys uh, coming out now. I have several notes. I have pages of notes. And I've also got articles pulled up. All of this is linked up uh, in the description. I'm also going to be reading directly from my notes, sharing with you exactly uh, what I have found. You're going to be able to research this for the latest updates as well. Now, the breaking news is that they're saying, as I mentioned, to prepare for the next 10 days for potential war as Iran has shut down their airspace for the next 10 days to allow uh, their, their drones, missiles to go through. Now, this is actually a span of five hours of air travel, they're saying. It is believed that the drones, these are just simply the first waves of many attacks that are expected over the course of the next 10 days. Iran has launched over 200 drones, we're hearing, as of the time of this recording, April 13, 2024. It is 10.15 p.m. Central Standard Time. In addition to that, it's been confirmed ballistic missiles and cruise missiles that have been launched at Israel in various ways at various targets. There has actually been footage that has been released as well of the drones flying over airspace in Iraq uh, on their way to Israel. So this is circulating around social media. There is now footage coming out of the drones on their way and them also being stopped, taken down by US forces and Israeli forces. The drones... Are you not entertained? I think it was a coincidence that that boat hit that bridge. Do y'all think it was a coincidence that that boat hit that bridge? Uh, are massive, as seen on the video footage. These are, do not get them confused with small drones. As you see the footage, these are massive, leaving trails behind them. You can see these drones flying through the air on their way to their targets. Video footage is also emerging right now as people are preparing for this to escalate even further in the Middle East. Make no mistake, this is going to escalate, as I mentioned, over the course of at least the next 10 days. As we are seeing that there are cars lining up at gas stations, there are lines and lines at gas stations in the nation of Israel, in Iran. In Lebanon, video footage circulating around as people are preparing for what is to come as things intensify over the next couple of days. And are you preparing for this? Do you not understand that this is going to affect you over here in America? That the value of the dollar bill is going down and the price of everything is going up? Do you understand that these people have been predicting that an EMP is going to be used in America, which means that the power is going to go out. Do you understand that you may not have no way to travel? That you better have uh, of EMP protectors to protect your, the surges from your cell phone? As a matter of fact, I'm telling all of y'all right now what I think I'm getting ready to do. Get you a landline phone in your house and not one that you have to plug up. The one that goes directly into the jack. We don't have those phones no more. That's the only way that we are going to be able to communicate. If they throw an EMP, those phones will still work. We have to go back to getting a landline phone. We should have never let them take the pay phones out of New York. Why, we, why would we let them take the pay phones away? No more pay phones? They could have just made them free. Mentioned as well, um, things are intensifying with other nations. Russia has come out in a statement saying that they are prepared to defend Iran, that they have a right to defend themselves, and that if anybody were to step in and try to also uh, attack Iran, that they will defend them. As the United States is making their stance defending Israel, I've covered with you over the past couple of days the stance from uh, the United States President Joe. So now we're hearing that Russia is getting involved. Russia has nukes. If Russia gets involved, China's getting involved. China has nukes. America has nukes. Israel has nukes. One of those bombs, do you understand what it's going to do to this earth? These niggas got the power to crack the earth in half. 
and y'all watching these rappers? You you watching rappers? saying that they will defend Israel, they will stand by their side, and that Iran will fail in their attempts, uh, in their counterattacks against Israel. Now, footage is being released right now of people in Iran as well celebrating in the streets as the drones fly on their way to Israel, footage circulating around social media. Israel is saying that they are prepared. Uh, they have had weeks to prepare. They've known that this was going to happen. Uh, they have gotten everything ready. They have had several hours of warnings that the drones were going to be on their way. As I mentioned, they're saying it takes about four or five hours of airtime for them to come. They're saying that the vast majority of them were going to be taken down before they even reached their destination. So Israel is saying they are prepared. They have several layers of defense for the nation. They have aircrafts circling around the airspace. They have the Iron Dome for close range defense. They have the Aero Missile Defense, which is made up of Arrows 2 and 3, which can intercept missiles fired from up to 24 kilometers away and above. When you sit back and you analyze it, if it takes five hours for those missiles to get to Israel, yeah, they definitely got enough time to knock those missiles up out of the air. They're watching them through satellite. So it's easy. It takes five hours to get there, yeah. They better hope one of the missiles don't slip through, though. First atmosphere as well. And David's sling, which is designed to intercept enemy planes, drones, tactical ballistic missiles, medium to long-range rockets, and cruise missiles fired at ranges from 40 to 300 kilometers or 25 to 190 miles. Now, in addition to that, they have all these defenses set and they have warned the nation of Israel and all the people there. Citizens have been told to stay close to bomb shelters. Schools are being shut down as the entire nation is preparing for what is likely going to be unfolding. They're saying a warning of the next 10 days. Israel has also had. So they used our tax money. They got bomb shelters over there. We don't have no bomb shelters. We don't, they, they use our tax money to get bomb shelters to protect them. But we don't, we don't have no bomb shelters over here. So when the missiles start dropping, what are we going to do? support of the United States and Britain, who, as I mentioned, they have been shooting down dozens of these drones as well. The United States actively shooting down these drones, video footage and reports coming out. Now, red alerts, they are official throughout the city of Israel. So official red alerts of potential attacks and war in the nation. So uh, they're saying this is we're basically preparing for war, that there are major warnings. It just has not gone to that final announcement, that step of initiation that will escalate things. The Israeli Air Force One, as I mentioned, now this is known as Zion's Wing. This is their version of Air Force One. This is airborne now for the first time ever. People calling it the doomsday plane, that if this is up in the air, it means that war is happening. This is the first time Israel's uh, Air Force One. It's called the doomsday plane. And if it's up in the air, that means we on the break of doomsday. Are y'all getting prepared? Are you not entertained? As Zion's wing is up in the air. Now, as I mentioned, there's been conflicting information coming out. People saying that uh, Benjamin Netanyahu and the cabinet are abandoning the nation. That is not the case. Um, this is in the air. It is empty. It is currently in the air, circling the nation to avoid it getting hit. However, Benjamin Netanyahu and his cabinet, they are not in it. They are currently reportedly meeting underground, preparing for the next steps. They are saying they're having meetings, preparing for retaliation. Israel will be responding to this. We're going to see to what degree they respond. We're also going to be seeing the response of the nations. As I mentioned, Russia saying they support Iran, the United States, Britain saying they support Israel. 
It is to keep it from being hit, as I mentioned, uh, as the airports could be major targets for strikes uh, from Iran. Now, Israel is preparing to respond. They said that they are, and that they will, and that they are preparing right now. Uh, they said whoever hits them, they will hit back. Now, there are also claims coming out. Now, this is not confirmed that Tehran has been experiencing blackouts uh, since this has all started unfolding, which they're saying could already be responses from Israel. Iran says that anyone that is. You got to listen. Sometimes you got to let these other niggas do your homework because these white boys don't play. I'll, shout out to this white boy right here. He on his job. Iran is dealing with blackouts. They're losing power already. Israel hasn't even struck yet. Iran is dealing with power outages. But it's funny how Iran dealing with power outages, but for the last few years, the news has been predicting that America is going to get hit with an EMP and America is going to lose power. You know why? Do I got to spell it out for you? Same niggas that pulled off 9-11 going to be the same niggas that hit us with an EMP. Don't tell nobody. If you listen carefully, you can hear. Opening their airspace or their ground space for Israel for attacks that they will be dealt with as well. And Iran sending a message to the United States specifically saying, stay away. Stay away from what's unfolding it does not involve you as America is currently going and shooting down the drones that have been launched at Israel. Iran has also been reported of telling the UN that their attacks are justified by Article 51 of the UN Charter, saying that this is a response that they have the right to defend themselves and retaliate for what is taking place. So these are some of the notes that I've had from the last time I went live about four or five hours ago when they first initially launched those drones in the air. That is what has unfolded over the course of the last four or five hours. Now, in addition to that, I'm also taking a look at the live updates right now. I'm going to share with you this. This coming up from the Washington Post. As I mentioned, this is also linked in the description below for you. Also, do me a favor. I see we've got about 2,300 people live with me. If you have not yet done so, please hit the like button for me. Uh, just helps spread this out so people can get the... And we got double the amount that he had. We got 4,300 people in the building. Bring your ass over to the like button and hit the like button. Because if y'all notice, y'all could tell something going on with my page right now. Y'all could tell. Y'all see it. This is the real shit right here. This is what we supposed to be paying attention to. Not the celebrity gossip bullshit. Let me tell y'all something, man. If you scared is because you love the world, the world like Pac said, it's not about being scared. It's about being prepared, nigga. I done survived shootouts. I done survived many a shootouts. This shit ain't about being scared. It's about being prepared, my, my, my nigga. What answers are you going to have for my kids? When the power go out and their stomachs is hungry. These women got babies to feed. When you can't go to the supermarket because your community look like Baghdad. When your block look like a third world country and there is no stores no more and your buildings look like rubble, what do you tell your children? It's mentally getting prepared. It's not always about being scared. Do you understand? The people overseas, they watch their grandmother die, grandmother die, their aunts die, their uncles die. They didn't watch generations die in one day. They not scared, they're angry, motherfucker. When you see your dad, when you gotta pick building bricks, rubble, rocks when you gotta grab a blanket and put fire they didn't end your family ass out so bad they on fire and they gotta use blankets to put your family out on fire when you see like shit like that 
You're not scared anymore. Now you're angry. But you angry with no answers. Fuck is you talking about? Fear? Once you sitting up there and you watching a missile go through your white face, you'll never be able to kiss your wife again? You see people carrying their babies. And there's no hospitals no more. Those buildings are gone. They don't even have hospitals. You think the people are afraid? They're not afraid. They're angry. Why you keep, why y'all cowards keep using afraid? Afraid of what? The people are living so bad over there that they want to die. The only thing that they have left over there is their faith, is their prayer. And us people over in America, even the poor people in America, got fat while those people were starving. It's your tax dollars that's paying for their genocide. We got money for wars but can't feed the poor. I hate when niggas talk that fear shit. Fear don't have nothing to get... Fear doesn't have nothing to do with being prepared. Fear is something that does not live in me. That's why I got a big mouth and I'm disrespectful. I got a big mouth and I'm disrespectful because fear doesn't live in me. I fear God. I fear not having answers for my children when it's time for them to eat. When the water is polluted and poisoned and you can't and you don't have a water supply. Oh, I love to taste the water. Yeah, and that's water. Now, y'all don't have drunk highs tonight. You have that sober nigga that's trying to figure out answers. I'm in the process of building myself back up. Because the world done broke me down. The world done broke you down. subscribe to stay up to date it's totally free why not and also uh resources available for you free resources of the newsletter to stay connected off of social media platforms also if power grids go down here in the u.s a guide for you and your family what to take into consideration as well um, and also if you're somebody that needs additional meds medical kits available i believe we have now support in all 50 states if you are interested those are in the in the description down below. And here's the live updates coming out now. This coming out from- I gotta stop that for a second. These people have a newspaper just in case online goes down. These people have medical supplies for they people because they know what's to come, so they preparing. Medical supplies. They have a paper line to give, to, to give papers. So if the internet is gone, their message is still getting out so that they can communicate with each other. What do we have? Rick Ross? Jim Jones? Meek Mills? Mano? Now all of a sudden, we got the Migos, the nigga that's still alive beefing with Chris Brown instead of beefing with Jay Prince? Washington Post, this one currently updated about four minutes ago that says Iran has launched more than 200 drones and missiles at Israel. So there was a lot of people speculating that this was just simply a response that they had to do to show that, you know, they were responding to what happened in Damascus. They're saying no, they have amplified this significantly, that there are missiles 
ballistic missiles, cruise missiles that are on their way to Israel as well. And they're, they're trying to time them to all arrive and hit simultaneously, all arriving at the same time. Iran has launched about 200 drones, cruise missiles, ballistic missiles as well towards Israel. Israel Defense Force spokesman Daniel Hagari said, the ongoing barrage is the first full-scale military attack by Tehran against Israel. Israel and its allies are intercepting the strikes, but a number of Iranian missiles fell inside of Israeli territories. So if you're wondering, they have arrived, uh, and it says some of them did fall inside of Israeli territory causing minor damage to military bases. Uh, a young girl was injured in the attacks as well, Hagari said. Now, uh, that is the latest live update that I have from the Washington Post. Uh, let's see here. What does Israel's air defense look like? I just covered that for you guys as well. They have um, the Iron Dome, which is the most well-known. They have the Aero System Defense, along with David's sling, various types of defense systems to protect them against what's going on. And we're hearing from Benjamin Netanyahu and also from Israel. But they're saying they're prepared. They're not afraid. And they're actually planning the retaliation. So this will be escalating. Now, in addition to that, we receive warnings, as I mentioned. Uh, we're hearing that Russia is siding with Iran. The United States is defending Israel. Iran is saying literally stay away, back away from this, uh, because whoever supports Israel, they will be held accountable. This coming out from Fox News just a little while ago says Iran warns the U.S. to stay away as America shoots down drones. His page is on Steve Rams. Let y'all see that right there. That's the that's the guy page right there. Shout out to him for doing. Because sometimes you ain't got to do all the work. This dude be heavy on this shit every single day. He's heavy on it. He's heavy on it. Launched at Israel. And it says Iran's mission to the United Nations says that the attacks were justified by Article 51 of the UN Charter. Iran's mission to the United Nations argued that the country's missiles and drones fired towards Israel were justified, warning the U.S. to, quote, stay away. It is a conflict between Iran and the rogue Israeli regime from which the U.S. must stay away. Iran's mission to the United Nations said in a statement. So Iran uh, specifically calling the, out the U.S. in their statement to the U.N. Iran's warnings came as U.S. officials confirmed to Fox News that the U.S. military is continuing to shoot down Iranian drones that are heading towards Israel. U.S. forces in the region continue to shoot down Iranian-launched drones targeting Israel. Our forces remain postured to provide additional defense support and to protect the U.S. forces operating in the region, a U.S. military official said. Now, in a statement, Iran's mission to the United Nations argued that the attacks were justified by Article 51 of the UN Charter, which recognizes a member of the United Nations. Yo, they actually got a charter. It's like a, 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 a Bible of war to allow what tactics to use in war. Are you listening? They got a, they got a charter that says what missile strikes is okay for them to do. Like, this shit is crazy. Like, so the United Nations is the referee of this shit, huh? But what is not doing is stopping the foul shit that's happening to the people over there. Can't make this shit up. Right to self-defense if attacked by another nation. Iran said that the missiles and the drones that were launched in a retaliatory attack to an airstrike on the Iranian consulate in Syria that left several generals losing their lives. Iran's military action was in response to the Zionist regime's aggression against our diplomatic premises in Damascus, they said in a statement. Israel has not claimed responsibility for the attack on Iran's consulate in Damascus. The statement said that the retaliatory attack was in response to the strike in Syria and that the matter can be deemed concluded. However, should the Israeli regime make another mistake, Iran's response will be considerably more severe. So just to clarify, yes, you did hear that right. Iran is saying that now things are even, that with the attack that took place, uh, that now this is their response, and that if Israel does not respond to this at all, that they will back away. But we're hearing that at this time, Israel is saying there is no way... <laughs> so, 
So, Iran said they threw 200 missiles to land in Israel all at the same time. And if you accept us bombing you with 200 missiles, we're going to fall back. Wow. <laughs> Yo, you can't make this shit up with these evil people. All this shit is a play, man. All these people, the, the people in power, they all together. They only looking to reduce the world's population as us. The only community that's safe in all of this is Israel. Israel is going to protect their people, every last one of their citizens. America is not going to protect the citizens. Israel is going to protect everybody over there. America is not going to protect the citizens. Remember I told you that. That they are going to leave it at that, that there will be a response at this time. They are currently planning uh, how they will be retaliating for what has unfolded over the course of the past couple of hours. Now, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said Israel had for weeks been preparing for the possibility of a direct attack from Iran. Netanyahu said Israeli's air defense, they are currently deployed. We are ready for any scenario, both in attack and defense. I established a clear principle. Whoever hurts us, we will hurt them. We will protect ourselves from any threat, and we will do so with coolness and determination, he said. That is a statement coming out from Benjamin Netanyahu, and also updates coming out from Politico as to what is unfolding uh, and what has Iran just unleashed with this major attack against Israel. What is next coming out from the Atlantic Council? Um, and they're basically saying that this is the beginning of more waves to come. They're saying that they have shut down the airspace in Iran for the next 10 days. This is day one of 10 at least, uh, that they're expecting there to be more attacks, but we are gonna be seeing responses from Israel. And again, sides essentially being drawn, the United States making it very clear which side they are on, um, and Russia saying they're supporting Iran. Uh, various airspaces being closed, being shut down. And as I mentioned, video footage circulating right now around social media, around news of these drones that are flying across the airspace on their way from Iran to Israel. But Israel saying that four or five hours for drones to fly across, that they've been prepared. Damn, I can't, oh, I, I almost can't wait to get off this live so I can see all this footage because while all this was taking place, I'm live with y'all. So when I get off this live, I might be doing another live. So, yo, because we got a lot to talk about. I can't even conclude this live until I see all the shit that this nigga talking about. There's a lot of shit. There's a lot of shit as Satan. Like, y'all gotta understand something though, right? What I want y'all to understand. Matter of fact, I'm gonna let him finish. I'm gonna let him finish. He did the groundwork. Then I'm gonna go in. They are prepared. They will be responding. Uh, and this is not the end of it uh, whatsoever. And as I mentioned as well, uh, gas lines, uh, lines of people getting ready to stock up on resources uh, in Israel, in Iran, in uh, other nations as well surrounding as they're saying that this is going to be impacting the economy, the people. They're stocking up on supplies and getting ready. The sirens are sounding throughout Israel in various areas uh, and they're telling people to stay close to those bomb shelters. So things are intensifying. That is the latest that has been coming out here just uh, in the past couple of hours as we did the update before when those drones were first launched there's been quite a bit that has been coming out and also we're hearing that iran is telling israel do not sleep as you should prepare for what is coming uh and there's they said the nigga said don't sleep that's like me talking to the nigga that shot me nigga will not catch you though <laughs> this is entertainment listen fbi I know y'all watching i know the detectives is watching this shit is just entertainment the nigga that shot me, the nigga, you better keep your head on the swivel, my nigga. You better keep your head on the swivel. Because when I cut, yo, let me tell you something. When you see me, see the thing about, yo, it's, it's like when, when you see me, I'm not putting a mask on. When I see you, it's on sight. I'm not putting a mask on. And nine times out of ten, you're not going to have a mask on. So when we, when we, when we bump heads... One of us going to jail for the rest of our lives and the other one going to be out of here. It ain't, it ain't going to be no...
Police acting like they don't know who did. Because you know what's cameras everywhere. When I catch you, I'm not even trying to hide my face, my nigga. When I see you, you ain't going to have no choice but to respond. But I, but but you know. You know. Everywhere you go, you better keep that thing on you. Everywhere. 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 Just make sure you don't stand on that corner too long. Don't stand in front of them stores too long. Don't do that. Don't you get leaned up out there. Don't you don't, don't take that drink standing on that corner. And as long as you don't violate my house, I won't violate your family. This is all entertainment. So basically, I'm just showing y'all this is what this is what these countries are saying to each other. <laughs> this is what them countries are saying to each other. And let me say this too, man. I know some of y'all don't watch the dirty section of YouTube. But um, this is not digital Hollywood. This shit ain't pretend, my nigga. This ain't no fucking digital Hollywood. This ain't pretend. Hassan Campbell don't go around lying. And I don't like fucking liars. I don't like niggas that lie. I don't like niggas that frame niggas. I don't like shit like that. I like honorable men. I don't like niggas that's instigators. I don't like shit like that. But this gonna be a whole nother video. I just had to make that shit clear. This shit is not fake. This, is, this shit is not real. Everything about me is real. Everything about me, I try to have integrity. Yeah, I make mistakes. I was living in pain. So y'all see me fumble and almost crash out. And I know my life is so real that niggas is making fun and making memes. Yeah, but some of them saying I got shot. Some of them saying I didn't get shot. Because my life is just that fucking real. Niggas can't believe a nigga can bounce back the way I bounce back. But I guarantee you one thing you will never see, ever, ever see. You will never see a nigga walk dead up on me and punch me dead in my face. You would never see a nigga walk dead up on me and just punch me in my face. You would never see a nigga walk up on me and call me out to get it on. Like that bitch ass nigga Gully TV and the nigga standing around talking about, what did I do to you? Nigga whole voice changed. Don't compare me to these niggas. And no, I don't pay for views. It's impossible for a nigga to have 600 people watching him. On a live, and a couple of hours later, you got a hundred thousand goddamn view. You got a hundred thousand views. When YouTube catch up to you, I ain't gonna even say your name, cause I know y'all niggas is watching me. When YouTube catch up to you with that paying for view shit, you're gonna lose your channel, my nigga. You're gonna lose your monetization. So if you wanna, if you wanna play with YouTube like that, and y'all wanna play for them views, you paying for them views the same way Ron Savage is paying for them views to make his channel look bigger. When YouTube catch you, they're going to take your monetization. Then they're going to fuck around and they're going to make your channel worse than Bullets Gotti. Keep on play, keep on paying for them views. Go ahead. You know how you can tell when niggas is paying for their views? You got 100,000 views with damn near no likes, no comments, none. Like, come on, stop it. Your analytics showed how many people was watching you while you was live. Y'all niggas be bugging. Watch when YouTube catch up to you, though. Stay tuned. I refuse to pay for views. May Allah forgive me for having pride, but I got way too much pride to pay for a fucking view. I don't even pay for advertisement on Facebook and, and, and Instagram. Nigga, what is you, stupid? All you gotta do is look like all you gotta do is look at niggas' channels. Look at niggas' channels. Niggas can barely get ten thousand views, then all of a sudden you jumping your your views jumping all the way up to a hundred thousand. Like stop it, five. They're giving them one option to see if they do not retaliate, if they do not respond, that they could allow it. To I never in my motherfucking life paid for views, and you know how you could tell? I don't pay for views. Because I could show you my YouTube checks, my nigga. My YouTube checks to show you the difference. My checks. Nigga, I make more money in a fucking month when my, when my channel wasn't being sabotaged 
Nigga, my mom, like, see, I tell the truth. I be real with you. Nigga, I was making 40 and 50,000 and 60,000. The highest check that I ever made off of YouTube is $63,000 in one month before YouTube starts sabotaging my page. You can't pay for views and get checks like that, my nigga. Tell them niggas in a dirty section to show you their YouTube checks. That's the difference. I don't have to pay for views. Look at my super chat, my nigga. You don't see the donations that I'm getting? Why the fuck would I pay for views? I'm the people champ. My people love me. Throughout my whole life, all you see is donations because my people believe in me. Why the fuck would I pay for a view? I don't need to. right now they said in their statement to the UN but uh, I think there is very little chance of that let me know if you agree in the comments uh, will Israel respond if you believe so put yes if you think that they will actually back down put no let me know your thoughts uh, but all of this just coming out here as I mentioned uh, since this all started unfolding uh, let me see here people saying yes uh, Janet Jenkins saying don't be scared be prepared yes I agree with that 100% um, some people saying no, that they won't respond. Uh, a lot of people saying yes. Uh, so let's hear what is happening with Russia. Russia vocalizing that they will be supporting Iran uh, in defending themselves and that if anybody were to attack Iran, that Russia will be by their side to support them and to defend them as well. So uh, it does feel like, and as, as I mentioned, a lot of people saying that this is the beginnings of war and that sides are being drawn could be the next steps to World War III, but we will see things are going to be intense. They're saying at least likely for the next 10 days, we're going to be seeing what happens here. Uh, um, taking a look at all the comments pouring in, people saying yes, they believe that there will be a response. Uh, Connie Allen saying Jesus is coming soon with praying hands. Yes, if you're a praying individual, please pray for what is going on. People saying to stock up on resources. I see Eder Valencia saying that. Uh, let me see here. Somebody saying that Joe said don't. One hour ago, Israel vows to respond to Iranian drone attacks. Wow. It's a lot of shit that I'm missing. Welcome back here to Live Now from Fox. I'm Andrew Kraft. We're approaching the bottom of the hour here. Uh, it's a good place to reset about where we are uh, in this uh, very scary, scary night for Israelis up and down the country from the north to the south. Uh, and the kind of silver lining in all of this is that the IDF says it has intercepted, with the help of the United States, a majority of the projectiles uh, that it faced incoming from Iran. Those are drones, cruise missiles, ballistic missiles as well here. So let's get a reset. Let's uh, rely like we have so much so uh, from Fox News Foreign Affairs correspondent Trey Yanks in Israel with some great reporting. He just filed this report. Let's watch. Israel putting its forces on high alert Saturday night, shutting down its airspace as Iran launched dozens of drones and missiles toward the country. The attack retaliation for a strike on Iran's consulate earlier this month that killed two top Iranian generals. Iran blames Israel for that strike, though the Israelis haven't taken responsibility. Rumors of war have been swirling in the intelligence community ever since. Israel readying its defenses in res- You hear that? Israel didn't claim that attack. See, that's some sad shit. Niggas will shoot some missiles, they hide their hands. So it, it, Israel is not claiming that attack. But Iran is saying, we know you did it. Trying to shoot down the drones before they reach Israeli airspace. Israel also directing residents in several areas to stay near bomb shelters. This is a severe and dangerous escalation. Our defensive and offensive capabilities 
are at the highest level of readiness. A post on X by the Iranian government through their permanent mission to the UN said the attack can be, quote, deemed concluded and warned the U.S. against getting involved. Though U.S. military officials tell Fox they have already shot down at least one Iranian drone. President Biden returning to Washington Saturday night, convening a meeting of the National Security Council. The White House maintaining its commitment to Israel is ironclad, saying in a statement, the United States will stand with the people of Israel and support their defense against these threats from Iran. Before this, Iran had only targeted Israel through proxy forces and avoided direct attacks. Tonight's event fueling fears about the possibility of a broader regional war. In Tel Aviv, Trey Ingst, Fox News. Trey, thanks so much. In the meantime, uh, you saw that. The stage is being set. How they say? You are entering a new world order. Out of chaos comes order. In order to bring about the new world order, they have to tear the world down to rebuild it. In order for prophecies to be fulfilled in the Antichrist, to take a seat on his throne. The world has to be damn near destroyed. And see, according to Islamic scriptures, the Christians are waiting for the second, the first, the, the second coming of Christ. The Muslims are waiting for the second coming of Christ. And the enemies of Jesus, of Nazareth and Galilee, is waiting for the second coming of Christ. If Jesus was assassinated, In his first life, what do you think they're going to do to him when he returned? See, in Islam, it is taught that the first sighting of Jesus when he comes back, he will have the, the, the whole world fooled. He will have powers to control the weather. He will have powers like you've never seen. It will not be Jesus. It will actually be the Antichrist impersonating Jesus. This is what Islam, what Muslims believe. Even the Muslims will be fooled from what they see. So don't believe your lying blue project, blue bean eyes. Do not believe your Project Blue Beam eyes. The technology that these people have, they can make you see Jesus cut through the sky. The technology that these people have, they can make you hear Jesus' voice in your head. You think that you're hearing voices and you don't even understand that they have frequencies that they can speak directly to your brain and nobody else can hear you. You got portals. You got Project Blue Beam. You got CERN. CERN opens up portals. When the Dijel, when the Antichrist take his throne, at the seat, he will come at a time when the world, the world will be at war. And at first, he will come and he will bring peace. And then 
He's going to show you his most destructive side. This earth is going to suffer like it has never suffered before. We are living in the signs of the times. Now, for you people that don't believe in religion, you don't believe in the Bible, you don't believe in the Quran, prophecies are being fulfilled. So let's just say the sick, twisted, evil reptilians wrote these books. Prophecies are still being fulfilled. So let's just say God is fake. Let's just say Jesus is fake. Prophet Muhammad is fake. Project Blue Bean is not fake. CERN is not fake. HARP, H-A-A-R-P, it's not fake. These technologies that they have can do things that you couldn't even imagine. You watch certain movies and you see dragons breaking through the sky. Like Lord of the Rings. You watch certain movies or TV shows <coughs> and you see in like Game of Thrones. You see in graphics like you never do you like there was a time like this was unheard of. You were watching magic. Do you believe in magic? These people have the power to make you see shit. The same way you see it on Avatar. When you watch Avatar and you watching Thanos and you watching the Avengers, they can make you see this shit off of the TV screen in the air. Shit is real on the battlefield. The world is getting ready to get a taste of evil like you ain't never seen. Have y'all been paying attention to the news? The news? Have y'all been paying attention to the news? Let me see if I got something real quick on this phone. Let me see something. Answers and some closure in a gruesome murder mystery that's gripped the Milwaukee area for more than a week now. Good evening. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Jessa Breisbeck. And I'm Amanda Porterfield. This morning, Maxwell Anderson was charged with murdering and dismembering 19-year-old Sade Robinson. The charges link two stories we've been covering for more than a week. The missing woman, Robinson, and body parts discovered in several locations throughout the city and county. Prosecutors now say at least two of those body parts are Sade Robinson's and officers are looking for more of them. We have team coverage for you tonight of this breaking news. CBS 58's Taj Mahal and Bryant McRae will have details on the investigation, but we start with Adam Reif live from Anderson's South Side home, breaking down the new information tonight. Adam. And this home is where prosecutors say Maxwell Anderson killed Sade Robinson after the two went on a date last Monday. A few blocks away is where Anderson was taken into custody a few days later. In moments, you will see new video of that. This nigga didn't just kill her. Nah, these niggas is different. And I'm starting to see more and more cases of niggas. Yo, let me let him talk in progress. Now, this case is bringing into light the story that has simmered in the shadows for days. While a concerned family was looking for a missing woman, body parts were turning up all across the city of Milwaukee. And now we have more information on why. Sick son of a <laughs> hurt my baby. Sheena Scarborough did not hold back. Sick son of a her hatred for Maxwell Anderson was evident from the moment her daughter's alleged killer walked into the courtroom. 
Prosecutors say Anderson and Sade Robinson went out to two restaurants and bars the night of April 1st, then returned to Anderson's home on South 39th Street. They say at some point that night, Anderson killed Robinson, dismembered her body, then drove her car around while he scattered the body parts in various places. The allegations in the complaint. This is why I say live life as if you want to run and stay dangerous at the same time. This is why I say pay attention to your circle before they hurt you. This nigga went on a date, took her out to eat two restaurants, got her back to the crib, and cut her body to pieces. Yo, I'm seeing mad videos with different motherfuckers. Listen, man. I come from a line of killers. I just got to be real with y'all. I come from a line of killers. I've been locked up for murder multiple times. Even though I don't have... A conviction for murder? I've been locked up for murder and attempted murders multiple times. I've never in my life cut somebody's body parts up. Nigga, if I kill you, I'm going to leave your body where it's at. Mm -hmm. At least let the person, family, have the decency to bury the body. These niggas is chopping up. You know how evil it is to cut somebody's body to put it to pieces? I don't have time to try to hide the body like that. I don't have time. Nigga, I'm going to rock your snot box and I'm going to leave you right where you at. I'm not going through all that. I'm going to let the coroner pick your ass up. Abhorrent. Um, it is the highest level of violence imaginable. Anderson also did Sade's car and lit it on fire. He spoke just once during Friday's hearing. Do you understand the maximum potential penalties? Yes, Your Honor. Anderson's attorney first tried to get the homicide charge thrown out. And there's nothing in here that says that she died at Mr. Anderson's home. Sade's mother again lashed out. So I'd ask you to dismiss that count before we address uh Anderson's attorney then alluded to Anderson being innocent. Had Mr. Anderson been involved in this this horrible tragedy, we would expect one to flee. But bail was ultimately set at $5 million. Shade's family had been searching for her. Yo, you know what's crazy? To actually find out that your daughter went on a date with Hannibal Lecter? And I can't even sit up there and get racist and make it a white people thing because I just watched the video. I didn't even do the story yet with the black dude that came home from jail that was being a counselor and running around with the politicians. This nigga had a whole body. He killed the nigga and put a nigga in the freezer. So this ain't just white people cutting people up and putting them in the refrigerator. This nigga chopped her body up they running around no city looking to find her remains so they could give her a funeral. Here, take this leg right here. Take this arm right here. The, listen, the gates of hell is open. And all the demons is running around on the earth. The gates of hell is open. Evil has escaped. This earth is in trouble. In trouble? These are troubles. You thinking that they didn't pull off what they wanted to pull off when they opened up that portal with CERN during the full eclipse? Nah, it worked. You don't see the evil? That's different. Since her disappearance, authorities used phone records, surveillance video, and home security video to close in on Anderson. He was arrested Thursday, April 4. Friday brought some answers for the family, but also more questions. Do something like this to my beautiful baby. She hurt nobody. And little closure. Me and my family would never be okay. Imagine trying to bury your niece with nobody for the service. Imagine trying to bury your niece with no body for the service. Bars.
That sounds ignorant, right? I know. That's a new level of evil. I can sit up here and talk about these celebrities all day, but for what? Yeah, that's a good question. Where's the body? The nigga used her car to scatter her body everywhere. And prosecutors say there are still missing body parts as they continue to look for all the human remains from Sade Robinson. Maxwell Anderson will return to court one week from Monday. Live here in Milwaukee, Adam Rice, CBS 58 News. Such a tough story, Adam. Thank you. And we have been working to get answers to this story from law enforcement about this case for more than a week now. And today, after days of silence, we're finally hearing from the Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office and the Milwaukee Police Department. CBS 58's Taj Mahal joins us live in studio with more on the investigation. Taj Mahal? Amanda Jessup, a joint press conference was held this morning. The Milwaukee County Sheriff's Office and Milwaukee Police, along with assistance from several other agencies, worked closely to connect the dots on this investigation, starting with the discovery of the severed leg at Warnemont Park. And so uh, the leg was amputated from the, uh, around the hip down. As a result, the leg appeared to be that of uh, an Subsequently, a Milwaukee police officer. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just wondering. Did he eat her? He took her out to dinner to two different restaurants. Maybe did he eat her? Who was aware of our investigation? raised the possibility that the leg may be related to a missing person investigation that they were conducting. The missing person was 19-year-old Shade Robinson, and we now know the leg discovered belonged to her. During a news conference, Sheriff Danita Ball and Milwaukee Police Chief Jeffrey Norman confirmed many of the details listed in the criminal complaint against Maxwell Anderson, including a timeline of how the investigation began. On Wednesday, April the 4th, our investigation led to a person of interest, Maxwell Stephen Anderson. After the severed leg was recovered, Milwaukee police discovered Shade Robinson's car had been set on fire. The arson investigation led police to the discovery of other human remains found in Milwaukee. Video surveillance recovered from the arson investigation led investigators to search. Hold up. They just said that they found other human remains. So if... In fact, he is guilty. That ain't the only person he did that to. I told y'all, evil is tired of hiding. This is why they make movies like the Hunger Games. This is why they make movies like, 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 like oh, The Purge. It's the drugs in the media, the TV, music, movies. Fabio Foreman can't even spell jewelry. Mix that brain power, power and drugs, and we are doomed. Cherry Keith, thank you for sponsoring this war family. Appreciate you. Area of 3,000. West Galena Street. On Friday, April 5th, investigators located human remains in the area. Officials say the remains found at multiple locations in Milwaukee are still being processed for official identification, although Sheriff Ball says they do not believe multiple victims are involved. Sheriff Ball also told me that search efforts in this investigation are not over. Are you still searching for remains for Ms. Robinson? Yes, we are. And Sheriff Ball says right now they do. That shit crazy because it's like to kill somebody and then not allow their family to have the body is foul. 
To kill somebody and not allow their family to have the body to have a proper burial is foul. Shit is sad. While we sitting up here. You know what I found interesting? How many of y'all saw that? Kanye West. <laughs> the nigga gutted his mansion. Yo, who? He didn't sell a house. He gutted it. It's like, yo, what they didn't want to find. He didn't want them to find none of his DNA in the house. Like the nigga. Kanye West gutted the inside of his house. I'm trying to wrap my brain around that. The nigga gutted the inside of his house. I'm like, what he thought they was going to frame him for something? Like, I, I, I'm trying to get it. Why would the nigga gut the inside of his house, his mansion? Nigga had a crazy man. He gutted the inside. I tell you, boy. <laughs> the nigga Kanye West gutted the inside of his house. And I don't even think y'all understand what's up with Bigo. I'm, 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 listen. One of these days we're going to do a live here. Then I'm going to take the crowd over to Bigo. Because the same way I'm talking to y'all now. And I say certain things. I like to play the music so y'all can get the feel of what I'm talking about. Of the songs. And on Bigo, you can listen to music. Plus on top of that. I realized that I have to start building other platforms so I can get my notifications out because it's irritating to me that they keep playing with my numbers like this. And I'm not going to keep talking about the numbers. I got to do something myself. There's smaller channels than me, like Tariq Nasheed, even on Corey Holcomb. I'm way bigger than Corey Holcomb. Nigga going live, you got 15,000 people watching because they sending out his notifications. They're not sending out my notifications. They isolate in certain like like certain people in certain areas for my views. They are. And for me, I don't feel like doing like academics where you see that they're trying to affect your channel. Now you gotta go live for eight. I don't wanna do eight hour lives every day. I don't wanna do that. I don't wanna talk to nobody for eight hours every goddamn day. No, I'm sorry. Now if I had different personalities, because this shit get boring after a while and you'll kill your brain. I don't want to talk about no celebrities for eight hours. I'm sorry. I don't want to do that. He ain't finished. He's far from finished. He's beating the algorithm that way. Because when they start slowing down your numbers, what they not showing you is the people that's coming in and coming out. Like, look, we got 4,100 people watching right now, right? Hassan, you're not a bigger celebrity on YouTube than Corey Holcomb still. My YouTube following 
and on YouTube is bigger than Corey Holcomb's, whether you like it or not, my nigga. And not only is my, 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 my YouTube page bigger, but before I deleted all my videos because they tried to take my own, when they took my monetization, I had over a billion streams, my nigga, so shut the fuck up. I am bigger than Corey Holcomb. Y'all niggas just hate the fact that I am the shit. How you feel about A Boogie with the hoodie new song? Step about um red rumping people. I never even heard it. To tell you the truth, I don't really listen to this new music like that. I listen to I listen to music of the nineties. I don't listen to this new music. There's a meeting there in the Situation Room. Uh, President Biden says this. I just met with my national security team for an update on Iran's attacks against Israel. Our commitment to Israel's security against threats from Iran and its proxies is ironclad. And if we maybe could take the photo full, I just want to point out who's in the room. You see there CIA Director Bill Burns. You see there Director of National Intelligence Avril Haines. You also see Secretary of State Antony Blinken. Uh, and on the other side of the table, next to President Biden, National Security Advisor, Jake Sullivan, Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, next to him. The now watch me screenshot us live right now. Because when it's live in, they're not going to show us that we got 4,800 people in the building. You see how the game be rigged? How I went out of the live and I came back in the live. We had 4,100 now we at 48. Now watch them pull the numbers back down. This is the shit that I be trying to teach y'all, but I'm not going to keep telling them that I, I'm, I'm on to them. How they keeping my numbers under 5,000. Last time we went live, we had 9,100 people. When the live ended, it was 66,000 people in the live. of the Joint Chiefs, General CQ Brown as well there. So that is uh, the national security team in full focus in the Situation Room, gaming out some of these scenarios as well. We're going to continue to game out some of these scenarios, but I think uh, it is safe to say from the reporting um, that the barrage by Iran is largely over. Uh, and so I think that is significant. It's worth noting. We're going to be reiterating that and repeating that as well alongside our guests, uh, Foundation for Defense of Democracies uh, expert and our friend Hussein Abdul Hussein, he joins me. Um, Hussein, thanks for being with us here on such short notice, uh, but we know you study this region of the world so well. You're very knowledgeable uh, about this. And that's the... So now, just to give you pretty much... That's what white America is paying attention to. In a minute, just for fun... I'm going to show you what black America is paying attention to. This shit easy. It's easy. And this nigga right here is boring as shit, too. This is big breaking emergency news. We're getting reports that a U.S. military base has come under attack right now. This is a current and active situation. And this is on the tail end of the attacks that happened in Israel today as well. And you can see here that airspace in the Middle East is shut down over Jordan, Iraq, Lebanon, Syria, parts of Iran. It's all shut down and there's a all out effort to evacuate people out of this region and out of Israel. All right. So this is what white America is talking about. It's white America. But I didn't know an American military base got hit. But stay tuned. Lots of big stuff going on. We're getting initial reports that a U.S. military base was attacked as well. Right. And during this attack today, there were actually U.S. Navy destroyers intercepting missiles during this. So the U.S. was directly 
shooting down Iranian drones and missiles today. That's what's been going on. And there's a ton of big news. All right, so really quick, hit that like, hit that subscribe to get this video out, to help get these warnings out, because this is urgent, and there's a lot of big stuff. So you mean to tell me we went from 4,800 in the building down to 36? Something, something just ain't. That's why I tell y'all, would y'all please hit the like button? I done gave y'all, we, we, we got three hours and 44 minutes in on a live. I haven't been on the internet for over a week. I came back strong. I'm going, I'm giving y'all love. Hit the like button because they are mass flagging to affect my page. That's what they're doing. They're mass flagging. So in order for me to get where I need to be, for us to get where we need to be, y'all got to stop playing games and hit that damn like button. Like, come on, man. Let's be real. See how they pulling numbers out of the building now? We done dropped under the 4,000 mark when we was just at four, within, within, within a minute. How you go from 4,800 down to 35 like that? Because that's what they doing. They playing with my page. Y'all already see the game is rigged. Going on. All right, look at all these big news stories here. We have a ton of stuff. We have cyber attacks nationwide cyber attacks happening and nationwide power outages happening in israel as well right so tons of big news this is a developing situation and they are saying that there's going to be a retaliation from israel very soon but initial reports are coming out that there are attacks of u.s forces at Erbil international airport in Iraq. And there's also saying there's attacks at Al-Assad Air Base in Western Iraq as well. And you can see here, people are reporting that air raid sirens are going off in this region. All right, so there is a U.S. military base here and there are U.S. forces here and there are initial reports this just came out in the past few hours that this international airport has been attacked and you can see here from this picture all right there is no airspace over iraq right now nothing this is a current picture i just took this five minutes ago so it seems like something is going on in iraq there's no airspace it seems like there's a shutdown in iraq of the airspace and this airport, actually, Ebral International Airport, is completely shut down right now. All right, that's enough for him. I can only listen to the first couple of minutes of him. He's boring. But that's black. That's white YouTube, right? That's what white people are talking about. Now, Black YouTube. Let me get some updates. Yo, chat, this is a crazy day. Um, as a hip-hop fan, you should be excited. I'm excited as well. Hold on, my man, Sam Stick. I don't know if you don't want to get up. Yo, hey, hey, you know I'm on stream, right? Yeah, nigga. I know, nigga. Hey, hey, uh, everybody, yo, I, I got uh, my man, Sam Sneak, in the building. You know, this is uh, some of y'all might know him as, you know, Rick Ross is DJ. You know, down with the MMG brand, been down with them, you know, has done a lot of AR work, has done a lot of management work and label work for, you know, MMG and other and other things. We got him in the building. Uh surprisingly, he's one of the people who fucks with the stream. He fucks with Big Act, man. Yo, what's up, bro? Oh, this is what black people, black YouTube is listening to while we on the break of World War Three. And shout out, I'm not dissing academics. I'm just showing you that there's billions of dollars to keep you dumb. My nigga, shout out that. He had 35,000 people watching him, leading y'all away from the war. The nigga had 35,000 people watching this live. 35,000. I ain't staying long, but I'll just text you something, man. You, you can text me back. Enjoy, man. 
I'm gonna see it and text you back. Bet. Alright. Alright. Okay. Jesus, Jesus. Wait. No fucking way. Chat. No way. Don't Ross just drop the record? I don't even know if it's dropped, but I got it. Ross just dropped the record? This is what black YouTube is listening to. We are doomed as a people. It's cool to be entertained. But but it comes a time where shit get real. And when shit get real, playtime is over. Right now, playtime is over. Hold on, give me one second. Yo, chat. Yo, chat, it's happening. No fucking way. No fucking way. Yo, chat, this is crazy. I have a Rick Ross record. I have a Rick Ross record. It's called... You have a Rick Ross record during Doomsday. We on the break of the apocalypse. We on the break of we just we just got over COVID, huh? We just got over COVID, where half of America had their loved ones in the hospital dying, and they couldn't go see him. We had niggas, baby mamas giving birth to babies and they couldn't go see their babies in the hospital. We had people that couldn't even go to funerals. You had a handful of people that was able to sit in a funeral. But this is what we celebrating? We was locked down. What they was calling the, the workers during this COVID shit? The ones that was allowed to go outside while we had to stay in the house. There was a name that they used. The essential workers. He's essential. You're not. Y'all don't see what's going on. This shit nasty work. It's nasty. In the days of Rome, the gladiators clashed their swords to keep you entertained. While the powers to be, the people who ruled the world, dealt in corruption, scamming, and taking over the rest of the world. While you watch the gladiators, the football players. While you sit back and you don't watch Colin Kaepernick take a knee. Because so much injustices was going on all around America. Now y'all back to watching football? Foosball? All of these sports is rigged. All these rappers that's on the main stage have been recruited by Satan himself. And see, even on YouTube, they pick and choose who they want to elevate on these platforms and who they want to decrease. They turn up the volume and they turn down the volume in these YouTube streets. I learned how to sneak through the back door. Oh, they don't want you talking about all the shit that's going on over here. Okay, cool. Celebrity gossip, nigga. 
I ran through millions, gave it away. Talking about celebrity gossip. I took care, if I didn't take care of everybody around me, I would, I would, I would have millions. And then when they realized that I was waking people up, using celebrity gossip to wake people up, well, look what they're doing to my channel. Just look. Look, I made millions already. That's what be killing me about y'all niggas. See, let me show you how funny black people was, right? Like with Math Hoffa, for example. They make fun of Math because his channel was on a decline. They punishing him for a reason. He's being punished. They're not sending out his notifications. They're playing with his numbers. The dirty section is laughing at the nigga. But in hip hop, rock him. His music ain't selling no more. Nobody's listening to his music no more. KRS One, nobody's listening to his music no more. Run DMC, nobody's listening to his music no more. But every so often, they'll go get a, a lifetime achievement award for what they achieved. And they might get a walking star on a walk of fame in Hollywood. But in the nigga section of YouTube, instead of giving a motherfucker his props because he did great numbers and became a household name where everybody rushed home, even if it, even if it was for one or two or three seasons, people ran home to watch their top YouTuber. See, in the nigga section, they don't give you a lifetime achievement award. They just count down to your doomsday and watch for your channel to fail. That's some real crabs in a bucket. And then you got niggas like China Bren and Harlem Legend. Yeah, I'm talking to y'all right now. Y'all got the audacity to call out the bigger platforms for not shouting y'all out. When I'm the nigga that basically helped y'all pave the way on YouTube it helped y'all build a following off of my following. And you disloyal, you dirty motherfuckers try to sabotage my name, my brand, and my channel every chance that y'all got. And then you think somebody else, the, the niggas that's bigger than me, you think that they watching y'all and they respect y'all and they want to do the same thing for y'all that I did for y'all. And, and it shows how ungrateful you filthy niggas is. You niggas is ungrateful and filthy. We not cool behind the scenes. You niggas is disloyal. And you liars. Nobody likes a liar. You, you niggas are liars. And I'm going to say this shit again, right? You niggas in the dirty section of YouTube. China Brim. It's only a matter of time before you go take one of them bloods that's coming home from jail. And put them on your platform. And they're going to go at another blood. That came home from jail. It's a matter of time. Before niggas bump into each other in the street. And you cause your own blood brothers to murder each other. Because all these niggas is killers. All these niggas is in jail. Stabbing and cutting niggas. And then you got them fighting each other on your platform. For entertainment. It's only a matter of time. Before one of these niggas kill each other. And you call this shit digital Hollywood. You playing with killers. And you putting killers up against each other on your punk ass platform. And you think this shit is cute. It's not. It's foul. And what you doing is foul. And your platform is the perfect example of why a nigga should never join a fucking gang. Shit ain't no digital Hollywood. I didn't even get a notification. I bet Lisa Simpson, they ain't giving out notifications over here. They sending all my notifications to academics. That's what black YouTube talking about. Rick Ross got a goddamn a 
a diss record? So you mean to tell me Kendrick Lamar got a diss record? You got that man, listen, who cares? Shit sad. Wow, Nancy Grace Evil Ass. Look at her title. OJ Simpson dead en route to hell tonight. Wow. No, this ugly bitch didn't. No, this ugly white bitch didn't. Orenthal James Simpson, dead, a.k.a. OJ, a.k.a. The Juice, so many other names, former Heisman Trophy winner, but he may be best known for this. Listen. In the matter of the people of the state of California versus Orenthal James Simpson, case number BA097211. We, the jury, in the above entitled action, find the defendant, Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder in violation of Penal Code Section 187A, a felony upon Nicole Brown Simpson. I'm Nancy Grace. This is yeah. Five Stories. I want to thank you for being with us. Not guilty, you big head bitch. your news man we ain't going through your commercial thing else he has ever done in his life you know it's often said that the lord loves a sick nah she do look scary she do look scary like yo picture this picture this face giving you head that's her sex face right there picture that get right Picture that face. <laughs> That's a sinner that repents. But how did Simpson live his life? Yo, she do look like a wicked Karen. Yo, she looked like a wicked Karen. Yo, this. <laughs> yo, the bitch look like. Yo. The bitch look like she eat real babies to real life. <laughs> After that moment when he snatched the golden ring, when he won the lottery with that not guilty verdict, the same as he did before. No change, no apology, no repentance, no reformation, no doing good. Bitch, the nigga was found not guilty. Fuck you talking about apologize. Why would he have to apologize if he was found not guilty? Yo, and then look at the picture she put up. You see how the media work? I'm so glad they put me in a position to do the same shit. Works. As a matter of fact, he continued to live his life boozing, drugging, Sex assaulting women, beating them, stealing, mooching, and trying to live off <laughs> his past glory as a football star. Yo, do you hear this demonic bitch dissing this nigga? Are we? Are you serious? Yo, do you hear how she's slicing this nigga? So you mad? Cause a black man was found not guilty. Of killing a white woman. And the crazy part about it is what they don't tell you. They actually had a real killer. That did they they know who killed her. They know. It's all on the internet. But you mad because he beat the trial. And somehow it seemed to work. He got standing ovations every time he entered a restaurant or a bar, free courtside seats. You name it, special treatment wherever he went. Women throwing themselves at Simpson. Why? I don't know. I'm just a trial lawyer, not a shrink, but I know this. He murdered two people, and uh, there's something else. Listen. This is O.J. Simpson's one day in court. By your decision, you controlled his very life in your hands. 
Treat it carefully, treat it fairly. Be fair. Don't be part of this continuing cover-up. Do the right thing, remembering that if it doesn't fit, you must acquit. Okay. Bitch, you didn't hear? If it didn't acquit, if it didn't fit, bitch, you gotta acquit. Do you hear? Scary. Damn, that bitch look dangerous. <laughs> She looked like a knife. Yo, she looked like a knife can't kill her. Not many phrases can actually make me feel nauseous, but that's one of them. Joining me in all-star panel to make sense of what we know right now. But first, I want to go to a special guest, a longtime and dear friend of Nicole Brown's, Keith Zlomsiewicz. Uh, You can find him at KeithZK at AOL.com. Keith, thank you for being with us. Nah, man. You and... She got a whole panel up there to rip the nigga apart. Like, come on, man. He can't even... The juice can't even rest in peace. Yo, the title was crazy. She said he gonna burn in hell. <laughs> oh, man. So... So this is it. This is it. Oh boy, here we are. Everything is about to get a lot more expensive. You need to stock up now because this is going to impair. Everything is going to get a lot more expensive. the global supply chain the war with iran and israel has started this is it it started and it's not going to de-escalate because even if iran wasn't successful in any of its hits which now they're starting to have a lot of successive successful hits uh israel vowed a very aggressive response so this is only going to escalate so you need to get whatever you need to do done now because oil is going to spike and they're going to try to suppress it as best as they can by depleting the half-empty strategic oil reserve. But that's not going to cut it, okay? Uh, gold has already uh, spiked once again. The stable coin that is pegged to it went up to $2,800 for an hour before retracing to $2,450. My friends, we need to really keep what in perspective what's happening here. This cannot be understated. This is completely unprecedented. This is the war between Iran and Israel, the long-anticipated one, 25, 30 years in the making, the one that they've been preparing for. And you know that this just isn't a one-sided affair. This takes two to tango. You know. Wow. He said 25, 30 years in the making. And this is Canadian prep, but he's very big on YouTube. This war was 25 to 30 years in the making. Our authorities had a hand in instigating this, and they surely plan on seeing it through, no matter what the outcome or the expense. This thing is going to get absolutely out of control. Right now, there are lineups for gasoline and supplies all across Israel, across Iran, and across Lebanon. Lineups of cars as far as the eye can see we have people in groceries yo do y'all see the missiles hitting in the background behind him you talking about bozo energy man listen to the message y'all niggas need to grow up this is not the dumb section of youtube this is the wake up section shit is getting real on you talking about bozo energy bozo energy are you kidding me bozo energy Grown ass, you better be a little boy talking about bozos. Grown men don't call nobody a bozo. Grown men don't do that. That's little boy shit. That's little boy shit. Or it's hoarding food. This is a harbinger for what may come here when we start seeing the collapsing supply chains or the stress that this is going to put on commodities 
pricing. Now, everything is just going to hell at once. What you're looking at behind me here is a successful strike by the Iranians on an Israeli air base, okay, uh, Negev air base, I believe, as well as other air bases uh, throughout Israel being successfully, successfully struck by ballistic missiles. Now, CNN is saying that the largest volley of drones ever launched was launched today, tonight, against Israel, which is insane to think about. I mean, it, I'm still in awe that Iran actually did it. I, I'm still in disbelief, in spite of the fact that I warned people three months ago that this war was going to start right around the time, although... If you're paying attention, you can see that some of those missiles is hitting. So the Iron Dome that they have, it's not stopping every missile. Some of those missiles is going through. Some of those missiles is probably intentionally going through. Uh, might be a couple months later, I said before the election, but I'm still in disbelief because Iran attacking Israel is exactly what Israel wanted so that they can continue to... Again, to... What's that? Slide tie 142 with your coward ass. We don't believe in fear over here. You do. So if the things that I'm saying sounds like fear mongering to, to you, that's because you're pussy. That's because your mama raised a pussy. Pussy, 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 pussy. Your mother raised a pussy, my nigga. The reason why you call it fear mongering is because your mother raised you to be a pussy. You put here, pussy, pussy, pussy. Your pussy, 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 pussy. Your pussy. Your mother raised the cow with. Warriors don't fear. They train. Warriors don't fear. They prepare for battle. Soldiers jump out of airplanes with parachutes and, and bazookas. Cowards get on the internet and say stupid words like fear and fear mongering. Like, nigga, who's talking about fear? You! I hate when y'all niggas use that word. I saw I'm coming to the Bronx and let's train. Nigga, I've been training in the Bronx my whole life. That's what I got my skills from. That's where I got my skills from, the Bronx. And traveling out of town, because the truth of the matter is you want me to be honest with you? I done been through crazier wars out of town than in, 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 in New York City. To be honest with you, I'm going to keep it all the way funky. New York ain't the most dangerous place, my nigga. We just the most cocky, arrogant niggas. That's what we are. New York is far from the most dangerous place. New York is soft. Honestly speaking, I'm going to keep it all the way funky with you. All the way funky. I'll be wishing and praying that the power goes out and all of those cameras all across the city go out so I can start my purge because I got a lot of shit that I want to get off my chest and believe me nigga don't never want to be on the opposite side of the gun when that shit is in my hand believe that I tell you one thing though matter of fact let me shut up before I say too much over this internet Sometimes I got to catch myself. Because I tell you one thing, I done been face to face with niggas. When niggas had a gun in their hand and I had a gun in my hand and the nigga wouldn't shoot. Niggas would love to catch me and, and catch me slipping with a gun I, while I don't have a gun. On camera breaking down to shoot me. That was the nigga's best bet. Because when I had that hammer in my hand, niggas ain't shoot. Niggas was politicking. Because how's the shoot back? Bet You better believe that. Walter R., but you didn't shoot either. Why the fuck would a, would a, nigga, would a nigga that's playing with millions of dollars, why would a nigga 
They're seeing millions of dollars. I ain't saying I got a million dollars right now, but I made it. I spent it. Taking care of everybody around. Why the fuck would I want to shoot a nigga on camera when I'm eating? Why would I want to throw my life away like you bum ass niggas? Only a bum nigga with nothing to live for will let him will let somebody else call him on the phone and send a nigga outside on a dummy mission. To go shoot a nigga that's breaking down and drunk on camera. Only a bum nigga would do some shit like that. A nigga that don't have nothing to lose. Nothing to live for. And trying to get status in a gang. Only a dirty bum nigga would do that. And then still couldn't even do the job right. Huh? The nigga that shot me. Shot me from halfway down the block. Because the nigga wasn't sure if I had a gun. So he wouldn't walk up on me. My kid, my back was to the camera the whole time. A nigga was supposed to walk up on me and air me out. Niggas was packing, passing a gun back and forth like clowns looking stupid. You had two shooters with one gun. They fired three shots. Nigga, you was a clown. You was a clown. Come on, brother, don't promote that energy, nigga. That is the energy of the world. The world is at war. I'm at war. Mm -hmm. The fuck you mm -hmm. think I'm supposed to get up here and promote peace? I got niggas waiting to get my location every time I go outside. I just be laughing, though. Because the same niggas that's talking shit won't stand still. Niggas ain't standing in one spot. I go outside, niggas call the police and tell them I got a gun. That's how the game is played. I go outside, I get pulled over, I get searched. It's real out here. Some of these niggas, they call this shit digital Hollywood. This shit ain't digital, this shit real for me. And just to set the record straight again, 10 Toes Down is not my fucking cousin. I don't know that nigga mother. His brother married my cousin. The end. I never met his family. Just his brothers. I don't know that nigga. Stop fucking lying. That nigga's lied too much. Some of us live in the real world. You know how many people want me? How many celebrities want me dead? Do you know how many celebrities got a bag on my head? Do you know how many gang members want me dead? Y'all niggas think this shit is a joke. Do you know how many gang niggas want to see me dead? And I be outside by myself. I don't move with no army. I don't have to. I move with the angels around me. I don't put my life in the hands of no uh, of no men because you can have a bunch of niggas around you and still die if god take those angels away from you that's camped around you you good you gone you good is gone but the reality of it is my life still have purpose that's why i'm still here that's why i'm still breathing i'm just laughing Talk about go back, come, come to the Bronx. I be in the Bronx every day. I'm in the Bronx every day because you don't see me don't mean I'm not there. I see niggas that don't see me riding by, getting drunk, standing in front of the fucking store. Niggas be on lean, laying on top of cars. Far off point. Far off point. Everybody's at war. Y'all talk about the wars and rumors. Of, well, nigga, the, the hood is a battlefield. The hood is a battlefield. I just like my position. Because I know I'm getting my war chest up. I know I'm getting my bread up. And what, what Pac said, nigga said, don't go to war unless you got your money right. Like, nigga, I got an ass whooping on layaway for niggas. I got an ass whooping on layaway for niggas. You read in between the lines. It is what it is, man. It ain't over to the fat lady saying, I love this shit. The ball is in my court. Time is on my side. Yes, it is. Yeah, time is on my side. 
Revenge is a dish that's best eaten cold. Revenge is a dish that's best eaten cold. Right now, I'm living my best life after getting shot. It's still plotting. Nigga, it ain't over. You better believe that shit ain't over. Far from over. But, I might decide to take the higher road. Be the good guy because there's bigger things going on and you got to pick and choose your battles. But you bum ass niggas. Because you ain't little niggas. You niggas is 30 and 40 years old. I ain't talking to the little niggas out there. I'm talking to you niggas that's 30 and 40 years old. You niggas ain't got nothing going but nothing going for yourselves. Nothing. Nothing going for yourselves. Hoss, these niggas is going back door. You know they not. You gotta be get. You gotta be able to get close to a nigga to get to back door him, and see the niggas that's capable of back dooring me. Gotta hope that I don't back door them. The niggas that's able to get close to me to back door me. Better hope that I don't back door them. Fuck, I look like I'm stupid. See, when a person shows you. Who they are, you believe them. And the crazy part about it is, God has been showing me, yo, it's crazy. Because people that I had love for, some people, they don't understand. It's like when you watch the movie, right? That movie with Al Pacino and Keanu Reeves, where he played the devil. Did you see the scene in the movie when the female, when his wife, Looked at the women and they face turned into demons. Like sometimes God will show you. You'll be looking at a person that's giving you a hug and giving you a dap. And the energy are transforming. God is showing you that that's not your friend. What about your friends? Or are they going to devil's advocate? Yes. Like nigga, you better understand something. I come from a long line of killers. In order to kill somebody, you got to rock them to sleep. Rockin' my baby on a treetop. And for you people that's not in the streets, I, that I'm, I'm teaching you. The world is grimy. It's not the strangers that'll rock you. It's the people that you know. Niggas ain't gonna backdoor me. The same niggas that think they backdooring me, I see them. The same way they plotting, I'm plotting. I guarantee you, though, they'll get backdoored before I get backdoored. I guarantee you, Somebody else's, the niggas that you think that y'all sending at me, I guarantee you they wives will be crying before my wife cry. Niggas think they getting close to me. What the fuck? I look like I'm stupid. Niggas think they getting close to me. I'm getting close to the you. You send your shooter, I'm going to send them back. I'm prepared to eat that commissary, my nigga. But I guarantee you one thing. I'm not going to let a nigga just shoot me and he ain't going to get shot back. That ain't going to happen. I see the chessboard being set up. It's always some... Let me tell you something. I say pay attention to your circle before they hurt you for a reason. Because the enemy always sends somebody that's close to you. The enemy always sends somebody that's close to you to get you. Tupac got hit up by his own people when he got shot up in that building. His own people. And even when he got killed in Vegas, he was lined up by his own people. You think Orlando Anderson was just standing there for no reason? That was the decoy. Tupac got played. Oh, that's the nigga that snatched the chain. That's the motive. That was the fake motive, the fake stage. Tupac broke the oath, so they eliminated him. Biggie went out to a party. He didn't want to go to California. He didn't want to go to the party. Everything in his gut told him not to. Puffy convinced him to come out. Puff pushed for him to come out, and he never made it home. Puff pushed 
for him to come out and he never made it home. Fuck, you think I, what y'all niggas think that I'm stupid? You wouldn't even see a picture. The niggas that's riding for me, riding with me, you would never even see a picture with me with them. You would never even see a picture on the, I wouldn't even, I would never even take a picture on my phone with us together. The niggas that's riding with me, y'all niggas think y'all know, but y'all don't even have a clue. Shit is real on the battlefield for me. Y'all think I'm a, I ain't never been a regular nigga. You see my man that just came home from jail after doing 25 years? He wasn't the monster I was. Shout out to Terrence. The nigga that just came home from doing 25... Nigga, he wasn't the... Bronx River Yacht. He wasn't the monster. It was me. I was the boogeyman. Y'all act like y'all don't... What y'all what must have fucked? Y'all thought... Oh, yeah, because y'all because I'm the old man now on YouTube. But what you think this old man gonna do when I realize that y'all niggas is trying to take a nigga away from his kids? What you think a nigga gonna do? When I got shot, I ain't running the police. I ain't even go view the tapes. I don't want to sit down with the police. I want to play. Yeah, shit just got real. Don't let these niggas tell y'all nothing about me. I'm not going to never let somebody just have their way with me. I know how to read it between the lines. I see the slick shit in the comment section. Ain't nobody going to backdoor me before I backdoor them. I don't care who it is. I don't trust nobody. I don't trust nobody. All the recognized threats. You haven't walked away yet. You wish to play with them. Some intellect different. Supreme peace. Let me tell you something. In life, you either going to stand tall like a soldier or you're going to pack your bags. You're going to move. Did, nigga, did you see me sell my house and move? I ain't going nowhere. I ain't scared to walk around my yard, but I guarantee you one thing. The nigga that shot me, he ain't standing outside in Bronx River in one spot for hours and hours and hours. I bet you that. That nigga stick and move. I bet you that. You look old and stressed out. I am old. I am getting old. And as far as me looking stressed out, I look like I've been through war. I'm fresh off of being shot. The nigga said the ops don't have gas money to get to the burbs. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. They don't. I got shot by a dirty nigga. If y'all seen the nigga that shot me, y'all be like, wow. If y'all saw the nigga that shot me, y'all be like, wow. It's a, the dude that shot me, because at first I wasn't sure who shot me. Because somebody that I trusted, lied to me, and told me that that person didn't shoot me. They lied to me. Nigga that was supposed to be my brother lied to me and told me that the shooter didn't shoot me. So I was confused. But now that I know who shot me, and I'm, yo, the nigga that shot me is dirty. The nigga that shot me is gay. The nigga that shot me used to have sex with Dawn. The nigga that shot me used to have sex with Dawn. In Nudie Building. He used to be up in the apartment with all them dudes having sex with each other. They used to have sex with the little gay boy from my building from the sixth floor. Yeah, he blew y'all up. The nigga, that, the nigga that shot me is gay. 
He a dirty nigga. They used to, he, was, he used to be in front of the store selling weed with dirty nails. He got dirty nails. He sell weed. I got shot by a nigga that sell weed. I got shot by a nigga that sell weed for a living. Nigga like in his 40s selling weed. Dusty nigga, dirty nail nigga. Police, if you looking for the nigga that shot me, look for the nigga with the dirtiest fingernails. <laughs> Go outside and look for the nigga with the dirtiest fingernails. His nails is dirty. Like, damn, bad hygiene. This is water I'm drinking. Nigga, I'm sober. Y'all dealing with a totally different mind. That nigga that broke down in Bronx River. The nigga that broke down in Bronx River. That crashed out. That's not me anymore. I'm over the pain that I was going through. I had to break down the bill back up. Ramadan did me something special this year. And I ain't missing no... Yo, and I ain't missing no more prayers? So now you telling me when I go to war, I got, I'm going to war with God on my side? Niggas can't beat me. Niggas that used to be around me yesterday can't get around me today. And the niggas that I do let around me, once you show me a sign that I can't trust you, you'll never get around me again. See, in life, you can't be so thirsty for company that you start hanging out with people that's bad for you. You can't be so hungry and thirsty that you get bored and people that you cut off or people that God has taken out of your life, you go backwards and you put them back into your life. You cannot do that. You can't do that because you'll destroy yourself. If you ask God to show you who your enemies are, most of the time, they are your friends or your old friends. So when God shows you who is your enemy, you don't start getting into your feelings and start bringing them back. He took you out of your life. and you don't, Yo, he, he removed them. Sometimes your enemies will remove themselves out of your life. Why would you go back and get them and bring them back into your world? Because you're bored? I'm a nigga from the streets. Don't let these niggas... Like, man, I done seen so much, man. So I done seen so much foul shit. Half these niggas that they glorify from back in the days, I done got busy with in the street, behind the scenes. And I'll tell you, some of these niggas that they glorify was foul. Niggas was foul. I done seen niggas be in jail. Go to Muslim services, make it salat, Allahu Akbar, and come home and go to the botanicas and start doing them voodoo rituals. Niggas is chameleons. They got many faces. Wherever they go, they adapt and change into that environment. They're not true to nothing. Stay away from the middleman. The middleman is dangerous. That's why I tell people all the time, like, nigga, my friends don't kick it with my enemies. I'm not going to let you pick a side. If you ain't on my side, I'm going to push you to the enemy side. I ain't got no time for fake ones. No Pac ain't see the play. That's why I'm different. Like, why would I want to go in? Why would I want to be a part of the industry? Why would I want to go to an industry party where everybody hate me? I was the first one on the internet from the streets, giving a street perspective and exposing these celebrities on my level. They hate me the most. 
Because I break down their plays like they ain't never been broken down before. And the best part of me, I bet I guarantee you. Let me let me let me ask y'all a question in the comment section. Y'all been watching me for four and a half hours on this live. What part of the live was the best part of this live? To y'all. I'm just curious. I'm reading the comment section. What part of this live was what, 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 what did you feel the most? <laughs> a lot of people saying right now Cause shit get real man Sometimes you gotta talk to people So they can feel you We tell y'all something man All these dudes that be running around here Acting like they tough They all tough to the police Until the police come knocking on their door man These dudes pick and choose They battle a lot of these people out here pick and choose their battles, but the reality of it is, make sure you pay attention to your circle, man. In the hood, I tell y'all this shit all the time. It's like when you watch the movie Juice. When you see the nigga Q inside the, not Q, you see um, Raheem inside the coffin and Tupac sitting up there hugging the nigga mother. That's the hood for you. Most of the time, the nigga in the coffin got killed by his cousin. Your mama sitting up there crying, the nigga that killed you hugging his mother, hugging your mama. That's the hood. I grew up in that shit. So a nigga thinking that he rocking me to sleep, I be laughing. It ain't easy to rock me to sleep. I don't trust nobody. Nigga, when I come in my house, I'm looking in the closets, looking under the bed and looking through every room. You ain't gonna pull, you ain't gonna just run up, run up on me. I ain't trying to be niggas friends. Ever since I've been on the internet, so many people try to backdoor and snake me. Even these platforms that I've been that I've been helping. So I done seen so much snake shit that it ain't even funny. That's why when people be reaching out to me, I be like, I be so distant. Yo, can I call you? Can I call me for what? Yo, I do the same thing, bro. That's crazy, nigga. I don't trust nothing. I come in the house. I'm looking in closets. I'm making sure ain't nobody in my house waiting for me. A person's enemy will be those of his own household or someone close. Sometimes it is your own household. Sometimes it is that bitch you laying in the bed with. Sometimes you do be sleeping with the enemy. Sometimes it's your baby mother. Like, I done seen a lot in my lifetime. Let me tell you something, man. In the hood, in the hood, sometimes it's the people, your friends, while you at work, it's your friends giving alcohol to your children. You know what it feels like when you find out that somebody that you trust around your child got your child drunk and high? An adult got your child drunk and high? Yeah. Pay attention to your circle because it takes a foul motherfucker to wait till you leave and you're not around to get your child drunk or high. What would you do if you found out somebody that you trusted or somebody that you loved supplied your child with drugs or alcohol?
the conversations that your friends have with your children behind your back. Your friends, your adult friends. And that shit goes on a lot with project people, with people from the fucking projects. Sometimes your friends and your family can't wait to see your children fail because people elevate you and put you on a platform where you are elevated and they honor you. So they wait to see your children make mistakes. They wait to see you fail as a parent because they want to have something over you. You better pay attention to your circle before they hurt you. We can't prepare for World War III because we too busy fighting amongst each other over jealousy and envy. Did you touch on Iran sending missiles at Israel and the U.S. base? If you did, this is the signs of the people and finally start getting ready because it seems the, that the people want war to be their own step. Oh, we definitely touched on that. The war is very interesting. It's very, very interesting. And it's going to be so much for us to touch on. We got so, so much to touch on. It's sad because, or it's scary. Because a lot of us are uneducated. on how to go back to the basics. It's crazy how a lot of our families grew up on farms. A lot of our families grew up in the South with pigs in the backyard. Now we don't even know how to start a fire. We don't know how to hunt. We don't know how to travel without navigational systems. Most of us without our navigational system going a certain distance, we gonna get lost. Now we have to get back to the basics and we got a little bit of time to learn how to survive. And it's 2.14 in the morning. We've been going like that. So I'll tell y'all what, right? It's 2.14 in the morning. We got 4,000 people in the building. I didn't make my prayer, my Isha prayer. I'm going to make my prayer, right? Last time I told you I was going live on Snapbox TV. I tried to go live, but it wouldn't let me. That's why I didn't go live. We got 4,000 people in the building. By 2, I say 2.45, we'll be going live again on Snot Box TV. This is what it looked like. This is my other, my other YouTube channel, Snot Box TV. We're going to go live at 2.45 at Snot Box TV. I'm going to make my prayer. And we're going to get ready for the second live. Hit that like button. Hit that share button. Hit that subscribe button. Pay attention to your circle before they hurt you. And wait two minutes. And then come back and see how many. And see what the numbers is on this live. We out.